I, I did hear that as well um, from a few of people that have come to meetings, um, even people presenting who might not necessarily be an expert, but um, instead of questions and answers being addressed to the board, they felt very um, <coughs> unprepared to have back and forth conversation with community members um, in the meeting. Um, but I would think that how the board wants to address that uh, in their presentations in the meeting would absolutely be led by the board, uh, a board decision and, and that potentially the discussion about the procedure is the, uh, a really good time to take that part into consideration. Can I make a motion to that effect, Madam Mayor? Sure. I'd like to make a motion that our special meeting on Monday be um, organized in such a way that the public are invited to submit questions in writing during the meeting, and these questions are forwarded to the mayor to ask the expert. Okay, so we have a motion that on a special meeting on Monday it be organized to have citizens for citizens to be invited and to submit questions to the mayor to ask the, the presenter. Is that correct? Uh, All right. I think I would report it. Um, yeah. Citizen invited to submit written questions to the mayor at a time during the meeting. And then the mayor will ask those questions to the expert. Okay. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. All right. Discussion by the board. So I, I'm, as a long-time <laughs> community member that would have been asking questions, tell me exactly how are you going to receive those questions? Are you going to ask that people, are you going to have paper on the back table? and have people put questions in a box on the back table during the presentation and then that all of that would be brought forward at a certain time in the presentation? I'm just thinking about the logistics of this. Yeah, yeah, really good questions. I think it's really important to put that up in the plan. So there would be uh, forms in the back that people could take and pens that they could write their questions as the meeting is going on. And then after we've had the board discussion, then the public would be asked to bring their questions forward the mayor at that time in mass yeah or we could collect them either way you know they don't an individual doesn't come up and say this is my question right. we take the sheets of paper and the mayor can look at those and say well these these questions are similar so i'm going to ask this series and then these questions are similar but it would also when i went down to here's the topic that the questions are about so i was thinking about doing it that way so, you know sometimes that's facilitation wise it makes it easier the person that's trying to do the expert testing, but it also disciplines us to a degree so we don't get into the politics quite so much right. no, I, between the expert and the public. Mostly it's the logistics. I would think you'd want a place for them to put their questions in the sure, back, but you know, answer. instead of a bunch of people moving up here. Sure. Um, so, of course, nobody can have a question ready before. No. So, um, this will have to be questions being written on the fly, right? And then everybody puts them in the back and then they are asked from here. Right. Just trying to get the logistics. Yeah, one thing that's a benefit for the public, like with any of our packets, they can read the, the presentation and the packet in advance. So they could even submit their questions in advance. That would be fine. Do you, do you anticipate that kind of, uh, that, there, that um, Brandon would be providing much in writing ahead of the meeting other than the report? It would, uh, my, I believe it would just be the report. So it's really, it's a matter of sitting in the audience, listening and writing a question. Right. Well, I'm willing to try this. <laughs> this could be a test case, everybody. <laughs> no? and, yes, Mr. Thompson. Uh, <clears throat> my question is in regards to the contracts that we have with these um, consultants and how these, this meeting time is built into the contract. And I assume we have a fixed amount of money that we can spend with the consultants and how much of their time is being spent in dialogue versus doing what's actually written in the contract. Or do we have in the deliverables of the contract, public meetings and that kind of situation? Yeah, in this purpose. 
We do in this one, yes. Okay. Um, coming and doing a presentation is one of the deliverables. And how much of that kind of time do we have roughly? I mean, I don't I, mean, I don't recall. I'd have to go back and look at the original scope. The, my concern in our last meeting with the folks was just like the, they were being asked, and I think this is what you're getting at a little bit, Dave, is they were being asked to do things that really weren't as part of the contract. That makes me a little uncomfortable. Okay, other comments from the board? Yes, Ms. Smith. I guess I just want clarification. Does this replace public comment or would there be a public comment time? Would there be a, a public comment allowed with a, a narrow scope that focuses on the projects as opposed to the staff or the board? Is this um, a work session? Pardon? Is this a work session? Uh, this is not a work session. It's a special meeting, correct? Right? It's both. It's both. Oh, that's right. That's right. Correct. So would there be, I just want to make sure we're not saying, you can submit your questions, but you can't state anything. Is that? That's a really good question, Trustee Mack. Um, it's really important that we hear concerns that the public might have. I think we have to deal with that. I think the thing I'm trying to get after is that our consultants don't have to deal with that. We have to deal with that. So maybe the, cons you know, I don't know how that would happen during that meeting. I'm really trying to temper it in a way that the, the people that are the experts that are trying to guide us and where we're trying to go have a chance to really go deep with us as a board. And that if we might be missing something, the public has a chance to ask questions to enhance that. And then maybe we close the meeting with public comment. I think that's what you're getting after some kind of public comment allowed in that. I know you're yeah, sensitive okay. to that. That, that sounds that sounds good. So I mean, public comment, comment kind of like we do a hearing at the very end of the meeting. We get a public comment. Something along those lines. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, but to expect the expert to answer the public comment, sure. that's what I'm trying to okay. get away from. Right. Okay. Yeah. What I want to clarify is that you're referring to when Brandon is presenting the report in what I'm assuming is the work session. Yes. Which we get questions. We get them answered, and then at some point we are going to convert to a meeting Correct. where where uh, action can be taken. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that you're not proposing any change. Mm -hmm. So I just want to clarify that because Thank I you. think you've been yeah. using the word meeting, yeah. and I want to clarify that it would not change how the meeting portion of that right. uh, February 28th yeah. evening would go. It's just yeah. for the presentation portion. Correct. Okay. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay, anything from the public? Yes, Mr. Knutson. Uh, Knutson. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tarly. Yeah. They look a lot. Yeah, they look so much alike. <laughs> Those white guys are all the same. <laughs> so I, I am a, a Thomas Marshall teacher for a second. Um, I uh, want you guys trying something new. I think that that's um, definitely laudable. Uh, my uh, concern with the arrangement that you're proposing is that it provides an opportunity for the mayor to uh, censor the questions or alter them. Um, so in recognition of that, I would ask that at a minimum, um, you offer all the questions that were submitted for public inspection at the end of the meeting or at some, some point in the future so that we can see whether the, the questions are edited and if so, how. That's fair. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Ms. White. First of all, um, could you re reiterate the, the day and the time of the meeting? Not just Monday, but the date. It's the 28th of February. 28th February. And yeah. what time is it? 5.30. 5.30. Okay. And then, um, so I'm, I'm assuming this is the long anticipated presentation from SGM. At one time, they talked about reserving the Paradise Theater. Is this the same presentation that we're talking about? Sure. Okay. And then, um, I, I guess there was some sort of an intent or we kind of have an anticipation of the information that's going to be presented, don't we? Or, or is it just going to be we're all waiting with bated breath? <laughs> well, we will have the report first. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I just wanted to say um, during the last meeting, I don't know what you're alluding, what um, Trustee Knutson is alluding to, but 
Um, during the disbursements, when I asked about the lead and copper, I, I was presenting this to the board and I was assuming, I didn't know that Brandon was gonna be at the meeting. And I certainly didn't expect him to come up here and answer a question, my question that occurred during the disbursements. I thought that's something you could have just gotten from the staff. So I hope you weren't talking about my lead copper. No. Okay. Okay. Um, great. Well, I'm excited to hear. Um, I'm excited to hear what this presentation is going to be about. We've been waiting for it for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Yes, Ms. Patterson. Um, thank you for uh, bringing and having a special meeting. And also maybe if we wanted to submit questions beforehand, we could just submit to uh, other trustees if that would work. Thanks. Mr. Bruce. Yeah, in a perfect world, our experts would have unbiased opinions. And I certainly have no reason to suspect that the FGM report will be biased in any way. But sometimes the things that uh, experts say and the way they say them, what they don't say, uh, carry a bias. And I think that's one reason that it's important to have questions from the public. And given that the mayor is not immune from uh, a viewpoint, I just want to reiterate, I hope she'll be very faithful in her, in her duty to present all sides of issues and, and not censor questions or take them. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Any board discussion? Okay. Let me see. Okay. okay. Good luck. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know. Which one is it? <laughs> okay. We have a motion on the board that the special meeting on Monday with SGM that the citizens will write their questions and submit them to the mayor who will then ask the questions to the expert. Yes, yes. could you please, in, instead of special meeting, say work session? Oh, I can do that. <laughs> or, or just the meeting. We'll just say yeah, the meeting. Just so it's, it's the work okay. session. It's the work session. Just, no, I think it's, yeah, okay. it needs to be work session because then we are not, um, we don't have the ability to make right. motions. Okay, so we have a motion before the board that at the work session on Monday, the citizens will be 28. February 28th. The citizens will write their questions and present them to the mayor, who will then ask the questions of the expert. Are we ready to vote? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that motion passes. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions for the town administrator? I'm sorry, what? Oh, no, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no. Yes, Ms. Clinton. Was there another item that was going to be discussed ahead of the presentation? And we're going to meet at five o'clock. Oh, that will be discussed later in the agenda. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Any questions for the town administrator from the public? Yes, Mr. Mark. Got it right this time. <laughs> Uh, I was wondering what the nature is of the tier two uh, CEPHE notice that's going on. That's received my. They went out today. They are the notice in response to the information that was provided to the board at the last meeting about a uh, failure to um, monitor or report. Uh, let me see here. There was no data available in December for chlorine or turbidity. And so we have a few days where um, uh, there was no information provided. And so that's what the notice is, is to make the community aware of that. So were the tests done and was not provided or were, were they not done? Was there, was there ever any danger to the public? My understanding is that no, there was no, da there was no danger to the public, but in, uh, so there were, were no readings collected for two time frames on January 1st for turbidity or chlorine and on January 17th. Um, Thank you. All right, anything else from the public? All right, seeing none, let's move on to public works report. Ms. Ferguson. 
um, we're working in public <laughs> work, sorry. Um, but I, I give, uh, I do applaud the willingness uh, for our public works employees to continue their efforts. They've done a really good job in um, the absence of um, a on the ground director. So I am um, pleased to report to the board that a, um, temp, a uh, probationary period hire for the public works position um, has been provided. The individual's name is Corey Heiniger. Um, he has extensive crew chief experience and project management experience working in the mines and, and different safety um, aspects. He also comes with a lot of um, experience in using data software, Excel, SCADA systems, and such. So I think he's going to be quite an asset. He knows that this is a, a probationary period because it is a very important director position uh, for the town. He Today was his first day, and he um, came in with uh, Augusto and um, has already, already hit the ground running and uh, making good strides. I can tell you that his process was... Um, a three-part process, which included spending time with Dennis Rich, who's been um, acting as kind of our, our, I don't want to say our crew chief, but our leader, our uh, on-the-ground person. Um, he spent over an hour with Dennis, and they went over different aspects of the job that Dennis knows firsthand coming up on his 27th year working for the town. Um, and Dennis came back and also provided good reviews and said he seemed like he would be excellent. Um, from someone who has had a lot of experience with different directors and knows a lot about what needs to happen. So I'm hopeful and excited that this will be a good fit for the town. Um, other than that, they have been working uh, steadily with the removing snow when we have some snow, doing clearing. Um, they have uh, done an amazing cleanup job at the sewer treatment plant. I know we've seen some big bills on that. Um, I'm anticipating the final release report from CDPHE on that um, order to get that cleanup done. Um, and they're, they're coming, he's coming out to do his last inspection and then we'll send it with that letter. Um, they, so they've been uh, really hard at work, have done anything and everything that we've asked on above and beyond anything that I've asked them to do. And so I, again, kudos to them. And uh, that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions specific to public works. All right, questions specific to public works? Yes, yes. I always have a question. I just wondered when uh, you go back out and sweep up the sand that's been put down for ice removal, just because downtown it's pretty, it's pretty thick. Yes. So I wondered when that might be happening. So they were talking about that last week and then the news came of the impending storm and they decided to wait to see what happens over the next couple of nights um, because they go and they sweep and they clean up and pile. And then as soon as it snows, they go back out and redrop. Now we don't want layers and layers. So they are going to go out and do a clean as soon as we get past the snow, um, but that's why they haven't done one yet. Good, thank you. Any other questions from the board specific to public work? Can you just remind me of the fellow's name who's in the pro probationary position? Corey Heiniger. All right, anything else from the board? But, All right, yes. Um, how long is the proba probationary period? Six months is okay. standard. It, it could be longer, it could be shortened if things are amazing. Okay. Anything else from the board? All right, seeing none. Yes, Ms. Pesh. Thank you. Uh, so is Corey the brother of Caden Heidegger? Uh, Corey is Caden's father. Father, okay. And Caden is the police officer. Um, when we get to the police report, I will okay. let the board know that he is not a police officer with the town of Paonia as of tomorrow. Okay, yes, Ms. Fox. Um, I just wanted to ask as uh, we move forward here, I know it's been challenging without um, anybody in the supervisory position for public works, but I'd like to know if we can work on helping um, the employees kind of develop a sense of environmental stewardship. Um, uh, you've been talking about snow and ice removal, but what I noticed on my corner is they dump snow melt over the storm drain, that blue snow melt. I know they were trying to do their job. They were trying to get rid of that ice, but this is all they knew how to do is, is take out their bars and dump 
blue snow melt on it. And the thing that really upset me is some of it got shoveled onto my plants. And snow melt is salt and it kills the soil. So I went with my shop back and I tried to get it all out. I saw some of the guys out there um, sweeping the sand over those valves that were replacing my street and I just pointed it out to them. But I, I want to feel safe that I know that there's an ethic down, um, you know, with the department head, whoever's managing them to avoid these scenarios because um, putting salt in the storm drain, that ends up in the river. And ultimately, I don't think that's the best way to take care of ice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Yes, Mr. Burke. Apologize for taking up more time. But thanks to Mr. Rich and the other fellow that's on the town work group, it's very nice, but I think that they deserve and should be offered at least some sort of a bonus for the stress they've gone through over the last weeks. And a raise would be nice too. Okay, thank you. Um, I can uh, let the board know that um, public works crews did receive their raise um, last February. And uh, Mr. Rich did receive a bonus in the last uh, in last disbursements as well. Um, and other uh, crew members and such are being that that is always a consideration as something that um, we are looking to do. I know we've talked about that uh, for a couple of years about moving away from just um, salary um, and when it comes to support to employ the employees and the staff. And um, I find that. I, I've always thought that bonuses and, and recognition for a job well done, even if it's nominal, is um, a good incentive and, and makes that employee feel valued and recognized and appreciated. And so that is something that we're doing. Thank you. All right. Anything else from the public? All right. Let's move on to the police report. We still have a police department. Um, <laughs> we have. Um, uh, reissued the ads. I have uh, two individuals who've stated that they're interested in the position, one who's been in law enforcement, one that's newer to law enforcement, but I haven't received applications yet for those two positions. Um, so we will still have investigator Hanyard and Officer Kramer, but uh, today is um, Officer Heinegger's last day with the town. Um, I have been, I've gathered all of the extra interviews and have all the information that is uh, that the uh, employees have stated they were willing to have public together. I just need to put it into a written form. I, ante I anticipated to have that to the board at this meeting, but um, that didn't happen. So I will have that for you at the next meeting. Um, but I can tell you that Officer Heinegger is not leaving because he's not happy with the police department or the staffing at town level. That's not, um, those are not his concerns. Thank you. Any questions for the town administrator on the police report? Okay, seeing none, anything from the public? Yes, Mr. Mark. Um, I read in the Delta County Independent that uh, we had paid for Caden's uh, post training. We did. There's a contract agreement, and part of that contract agreement is a certain amount of time that he has to reimburse. Okay, so uh, town will be reimbursed by him directly yes. or by uh, Hotchkiss? By, by, uh, by, no, he will, it will be reimbursed directly from Officer Heineken. Okay. And he did go to uh, Hotchkiss to work yes, for your husband? Yes, he did. Okay. Cool. <laughs> my husband's stealing everything. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? From the public? All right, seeing none, let's move on to the treasurer's report. Once more. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is this is fun doing it, uh, it adhering to that <laughs> resolution on the back. Um, so we don't have a specific treasurer's report as we still don't have a treasurer. Of course, as the board knows, it's a voluntary community um, program that uh, actually we didn't have one prior to 2016, I believe. Um, we didn't. The finance officer operated in or director operated in that capacity um, until such a time as a uh, former trustee um, King left the board and then came and, and was appointed to the position of treasurer with the town. He's the only one we've had for quite some time um, that I'm aware of. So again, we'll have to uh, at some point here soon need to bring that topic back to the board and have a discussion about whether or not we want to look at other options for the treasurer uh, and some of the other 
things that have been discussed before about um, reinstating some uh, form of the ad hoc finance committee or um, treasurer and appointing the finance director to uh, provide those specific duties that are required under statute, which is what's currently happening. Um, so we'll need to bring that back soon to the board. Questions for the tag administrator on the treasurer's report? Yes, just to be clear, does the treasurer report um, constitute the information from Cindy on the audit? I guess. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I have a question. Yes. <laughs> I just wasn't sure where it may stop and start. Um, on page 25, uh, where you provided the um, how you rectified the deficiencies identified by the auditor, I just want to clarify that on uh, page 25, the first red font update, these corrections will continue with the 2022 audit, correct? Is yeah. it, or it, 2021 audit? It's the 2021 20, audit because they're auditing our finances and our books from 2021 okay. in 2022. Thank you. And I had another question and um, that clarification and you know, I guess one of the other things is there was a requirement to do some classes. So I just wanted to find out were those online classes that you had to take by December? Um, there, this, this is actually what was in the audit. The auditor suggested some training, um, but they weren't a requirement and there weren't online classes. We have requested from the auditor information on where those classes and other, tra other training could be provided. And other than some hands-on direction specific given directly to Cindy, that information has not been provided by the auditor. Will we be using the same auditor? Yes, it is. Around? Okay, so a lot of this can be addressed with the same, I don't know if you have the same physical person, but it's the same company. Yes, it's audit. the same company and we anticipate it'll be the same person. Okay, so there'll be a follow-up by them. Yes. We would assure that these things are taken care of, clarified. Correct. Okay. Anything else from the board? All right, seeing that, anything from the public? All right, seeing none, I'm let oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Marco. So there is this, uh, Please um, come to the podium so that. I apologize, I'm a little off. Um, is this regarding the uh, uh, turning the deficiencies? Uh, right. And, okay. Right. Um, I had a question. Well, in general, I kind of feel like these um, uh, deficiencies, the cures for the deficiencies, I suppose. I'm not sure exactly what the correct term is. Um, but I feel like they should be coming from a, a third party yeah. um, rather than from the, the, the staff. Uh, if we could have a update from the auditor or from uh, some third party authority to indicate that um, these, these cures are in place um, and specifically the, the final um, uh, how they're all broken down. Uh, um, they state that uh, management is responsible for establishing and maintaining effective internal controls, uh, which are only kind of principles. And it seems like what they're saying is that we need courses. Um, I was wondering what, if there are any details about what's needed. So I can answer. So first we have requested in um, a, a written report from the auditor stating that the um, deficiencies have been cured. Standard process for audit is that they evaluate those um, recommendations and deficiencies at the next audit. Um, so I can't guarantee that that report would be provided prior to them um, coming and auditing um, and receiving all of the data for 2021 to confirm that those things have been taken care of. Um, and as far as the uh, training, that was direct and responsible, what I just answered for Trustee Smith, that the training was a suggestion, um, a, a recommendation, not a requirement or deficiency note. And that um, Cindy has worked with the auditors directly on some of these tasks and to confirm that the information they thought she could get from the trainings, um, she has, and um, has not been provided any direct information about where a formal training to address these issues are being provided today. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else from the public? Thank you. 
All right, seeing none, let's move on to the JDS Hydro Interim Report. So the report was included in the packet along with recommendations for the water system and where we should be a recommendation with to the order of, of what we should be doing on our system. It looks like we have, we're working on the PDR valve, valve, valve maintenance and the landlord plant, plant and bringing the cloud treatment plant online and also working on those SOPs. What about the leak detection contractor? Have we done anything on that, Ms. Hershey? Other than starting to look into contractors and firms that offer, we not deep dive into that. Um, I was looking because um, James Plum starts from JDS Hydro was on our Zoom, but he said that it was a little touch and go whether or not he would be available. And unfortunately he's had to log out. Um, so he knew that we were that this was under the reports just to, uh, to provide it to the public. Um, but we can, uh, if the board wishes to have a conversation about this again, if just generalized conversation now, I do anticipate having this as an agenda item um, at the next meeting, along with the um, along with the SGM JDS Hydro uh, collaboration. Um, and they he would be available also at that meeting um, to answer questions and present any information to the board. So would the board like to postpone this to the next agenda when we will have uh, the JDS Hydro representative here? Yes, Ms. Smith. I just, and are you, um, when you're referring to the combination of JDS and SGM, are you saying at a regular trustee meeting or another special meeting? At the regular trustee meeting. Would that be acceptable to the board? Would you like to make a motion that we postpone this to the next board meeting? Would that be to continue it or to continue? Just, yeah, continue or postpone either of those languages. Okay, work. I move that we continue the discussion of the uh, JDS progress report and data collection interim uh, and interim recommendations to the March 10th. March 10th board meeting when a JDS consultant will be on hand to um, answer questions and explain the report. Okay, do I have a second on that? Second. Any other further discussion from the board? All right, seeing none, anything from the public? Yes, Mr. Markle? Um, I was going to be able to discuss this tonight. I feel like it's very timely and um, speaks to a lot of issues that we've had uh, in the water committee, but if, if it's expedient to speak about it next week, um, I ask your permission to discuss this agenda item on the water committee at the water committee uh, discussion. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second to postpone or continue this JDS Hydro report on data collection and interim recommendations until the March 10th meeting when the JDS Hydro. Uh, representative will be here. Is the board ready to vote? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion carries. All right, let's move on to um, the annual subscription to Archive Social. So this is continued uh, from the last meeting. This is the, uh, it was brought up at, at two meetings ago by a trustee about the cost to continue to be a member of Archive Social, um, which is approximately $3,000 a year. And the discussion was the pros and cons of retaining that membership in conjunction with the Town of Pay Your Facebook page. Town of Pay Your Facebook page is utilized, it it's, tends to be um, in a series and then there's not a lot of utilization, but we use the Town of Pay Your page to push out information to the community especially when there's um, quick information that's, uh, and that we want to get out en masse. Um, we, that is one of the options that we use. Um, it's not necessarily used by the community for correspondence or for posting questions or asking questions um, to staff. Those tend to uh, 
those conversations tend to happen more on the mess on the message boards that are not being collected through archive social, um, which is why we don't um, comment on them. Um, so the way archive social works is any post comment, deleted comment, edit of a comment that is done on the town of Paonia Facebook page is archived. Um, you have a running record of those conversations, the posts, the comments. Um, if someone goes on and makes a comment and edits it, if I go and make a post and then I edit it uh, to add information, it tracks from the original and every edit date and timestamp so that that information could be collected and provided should it become necessary for, for any reason, Cora included. Um, so like I said, there's lulls where it's not utilized at all, and there's other times when um, it's a, a heavily utilized item to push out information. And uh, so I leave it at the discretion of the board whether to continue with archive social or um, to discontinue. If we discontinue using it, it is my recommendation that we shut down the Town of Family Facebook page. Um, or there's just no way that, uh, other than doing a post, I, I don't think it would be anywhere that we would be able to do any back and forth or answering of questions or anything like that because it isn't um, correctly archived. Well, discussion from the board on this. Yes, Mr. Knuth. Um, it seems that there's so little traffic on that thing, you think. And I'm wondering how many core requests have ever been uh, we go to the Facebook page to try to get data for that. I think that emails, the board minutes, any documentation, that's what core requests really come for, not for Facebook page. So I don't think we need to, as I listen to this, I don't think it's worth the $3,000 to do this, but I don't think we should tear down the Facebook page. I think we should keep it up and use it for the notification and the push out. But I can't see spending 3000 for archiving it. because, And I'd like to hear from the public on this too, because if the public feels that that's a critical piece of information, for code requests, then we can consider it. Okay, other? Yes, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, I agree with Trustee Knudsen. Um, it doesn't seem like we're really utilizing it very much at all, but I think I would like to hear from the public and see what their thoughts on this would be. Okay, thank you. Yes, Ms. Smith. Um, I just have a question that I know that uh, the town's Facebook page has been used extensively to let water users know that we have a water leak. <laughs> so if you were uh, to take the Facebook page down, what's your alternative for letting people know? And I know there's code red. Yes. I don't know, uh, I haven't seen it pushed by the town. Is that a reasonable alternative to try to get? So what are your ideas for how you would get information out in the absence of a town Facebook page? So the code red was one we just used just a couple of weeks ago. Um, we did do that when, uh, when they were doing a repair and we weren't sure to what extent it was going to um, affect all the users on the water. The, we can use code red for a lot, of, a lot of things, but part of the problem that we run into with that is that if it's very, um, if it's not isolated or affecting everyone, it can be difficult to narrow down who receives that call. Um, so that, that's the issue. It's actually pretty easy to utilize. I provide the text um, to dispatch and emergency management services in Delta. They put it out and get the call and then the resolution call, that's the follow-up. Um, and that's a call or an email or a text message. There's multiple options you can choose when you register for Code Red on the deltacounty.com website. Um, so we, we could utilize that more um, at, and with some of our, specific to water, some of our mapping and things we've done has helped um, help some, but some of the issues that we have are water lines that have um, other lines that go off a different direction and it's one or two houses that are off of this odd little connection that you don't realize and we don't we do our best to not miss those individuals that, and those aren't all mapped on, they're not numbered waterline one and this is everyone that's on at waterline two things like that so that's um i think part of the building of the process with the mapping of the lines um you can always do code red and send it out to everyone and in the code red give the specific area that we ex anticipate there to be issues and if you're outside of that area and experience issues you can notify the town and let us know um that could be helpful um, we would still, when we know it's a specific water company and things like that, we notify the company, we try to notify the 
um, company representatives so that they can notify the people on their water line. Um, we uh, heavily provide PSAs to KBNF now to uh, uh, almost anything that's going on to get a notice of that uh, so that they're aware of it. I send it to the DCI. They, they sometimes are able to throw it up on their Facebook page that they have and their social media presence. Um, those are the other ways that we do it now. Yes, just one last question on Code Red. Is Code Red only as good as people signing up for it? Yes. So it needs to be advertised more if, if yes. it should yes. just be used because so many people don't look at Facebook. Yes, and I we want I want to do some kind of posting as well at Town Hall to let people know that if um, people that don't have, so the only way to register is on a computer. It's not the only way to get your notice, but it's the only way to sign up to get notified through Code Red. So what we have done for individuals that have come in and that topic has been brought up, we've registered them in town hall. Um, and so I, I, and that's something that I'm happy to continue to offer for people that are on our water system and sewer system and, and live in our community um, that want to be a member of Code Red to come in and we'll assist them with the registering um, so that they can get those phone calls, landline phone calls, text messages, emails, there's multiple ways you can receive the notice. Okay, yes, Ms. Ben. Just to be clear, this, this doesn't affect in any way the town website. No. So stuff that we post on there is. Yes, and we do code red on, when we do a code red or an alert, we do an alert message on the web, on our town website as well. Anything else from the trustees? Yes, Ms. Ben. So, um, when I first realized that this could uh, help with complying with core requests, I did do a pretty deep search, as deep search as I could on the internet, and just found virtually nothing involving public records requests and Facebook and lawsuits. There was just nothing. Um, I, I certainly wasn't aware that this was would be useful in complying with core requests, but I don't think so uh, Facebook just arbitrarily erases history. So things posted by the town, unless the town is erasing them, they will be there. So I, and, and to drop Facebook altogether, it's the only social media platform the town uses. To drop it altogether when we're trying to use transparency, I think would be a big mistake. You know, it is utilized a lot, but spending $3,000 a year to, get a shot of everything when really the history of what the town has posted is probably the only thing that's ever going to be called into question. I, I would I would be in favor of dropping the um, archive social and and retaining the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ms. Fritz. I, I I would just say that I don't have an objection to that either. I would just wanted to I would make want to make it clear to to the board, and we can also do a a, a pinned post or something on Facebook that with that removal, um, there wouldn't necessarily be a response in comments below. That um, any questions that are asked that require a response would either be an updated post or an edit in the original post without deleting anything. It would just be an edit time, similar to what I've done on some of them that you've seen, whether you saw them on Facebook or when I sent them, there's the original post. And then when I've edited, I put that it's an edit, the date and the time of the edit and put additional information so that it's running that way, but there's no dialogue below. Um, because while I wouldn't delete um, dialogue below that I've provided, um, other people that have posted can. And so then you don't have that conversation tracking. So it would just be in the post. That would be the only thing we would use. Just posting it for information. All right. Anything else from the board? All right. Seeing none from the public. Yes, Ms. Rudy. I'm certainly not opposed to putting information out there, however, people want to receive it. Uh, not personally, not being a Facebook user, um, I looked at the town's Facebook page this afternoon and Again, I'm not a user, so maybe I misunderstood it, but it looked like I had to log on to participate in the comments that are going on there. And I object to that. Uh, that's a, a barrier to participation in a public governmental setting. And uh, uh, my suggestion would be that the
the uh, Facebook page might direct, might provide uh, notices and then direct any of the uh, commenting traffic to the town website uh, where it's available without the barrier of membership in Facebook, which a lot of people think is a questionable uh, <laughs> step to take with your life. So uh, that's my question. Okay, yeah. <laughs> It seems like Facebook has a self sort of search to it. So I'm not sure why anybody would do a core through the town when they can just search the day or the items through Facebook, do their own search. There's 2,500 people on the town of Panonia Facebook page. And a lot of people help each other, a lot of shares, you know, when the water stuff comes up, a lot of people help each other by saying open a faucet when the water comes back. So there's a lot of good information on here. I wouldn't get rid of it. I would get rid of, it sounds like that $3,000 a year is just sort of pointless. And uh, if you can just keep it going at a minimal, you know, clip and just put the most important stuff on there, I would say keep it. But Thank you. Yes, Ms. Watt. So I'm not a fan of Facebook either. I'm, I'm not a member. And I have, I share a similar feeling with Mr. Bruner about this forum that's basically unavailable to the public unless you're a member of this private organization that collects all sorts of personal information about you. <laughs> um, but that being said, so I, I don't know, you know, we have pay when you message for, we have the, so can those conversations happen in that context? And leave the town Facebook site just posting. I'm not sure we need to be accepting dialogue onto it. Um, but that being said, I, I do believe there are some greater issues around um, Facebook. Um, like, so if, and, and so it's kind of safe not to overuse it because you start getting to issues like who's doing the posting, how accurate is the information, do you need an information control committee, that kind of stuff. So it's good to keep it simple. But I'm just curious, are there any legal ob obligations on, um, you know, attorney-wise that we take on when we do actually have a social media account? I'm, I'm not speaking in favor of this service, but I'm just wondering, is there an obligation that we have to be aware of, um, that we have to fulfill? Or does the Facebook archiving satisfy any legal obligations that we have as a town? To maintaining a social media platform, and and that might be a lawyer's question. Right. I'm yeah. not sure I could answer. Yeah, that. I don't think any of us can answer it. Either. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything else from the public? All right. Can we get a motion on this? To either to. All right. A motion to. Okay. You want to give it a shot, Tammy, or shall I frame it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, that, <laughs> that we cancel archive social, but keep the town's Facebook page. Okay, that would be my motion. I would uh, make a motion that we uh, cancel the archive social um, annual um, members membership. <laughs> Thank you. And keep the Facebook page. Um, I would add, I don't know if this needs to be part of the motion, but that... Um, Administrator Ferguson or whoever is managing the Facebook page would um, do the the exercises that you said or the uh, make the statements on there that you said that would help people understand that this isn't a place for public dialogue. If, that, if I understand, so we can just cut the motion off at uh, but keep the town's Facebook page. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Can I have a second on that? Okay. All right. Further discussion from the board. All right. Are we ready to vote? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. That motion passes. <laughs> I'm sorry. This came from the tree board. The tree board requests that the face, its Facebook page be dropped, that it, nothing happens there. Uh, okay. Chair, uh, Chair Paula Martin said that over the last four years, only one member has ex expressed an interest in keeping it. So would it be okay to delete the tree board Facebook page. They have a website linked mm -hmm. on the town. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, sure. 
Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. So it is 8.03. Would the board like to take a short break? Yes. Sure. Review and um, with respect to this item. But as you know, the, this uh, initiative is the citizens initiative requires recording in progress. Sorry. Oh, I lost your video, but the, the, <laughs> The initiative requires the board to either adopt that ordinance in its uh, pre form presented uh, tonight or to refer that to the voters for consideration at a, um, at a special election. And um, within that memo, I also described that there are other possible action items that, um, that the board could consider, which would be include beginning its own public policy process to kind of examine some of the issues that are driving these initiative related to transparency and accountability and, and perhaps try to pursue some more comprehensive legislation if that's something that the, the board uh, wished to do. As part of that process, um, the town could uh, engage in some public outreach and perhaps some public education and internal education sessions related to CORA and, and other issues. And um, so that'd be one option to take kind of parallel to its action on this initiative. Um, other action alternatives that I put in my memo would be that if uh, the initiative was passed either by the board or at a special election, the board could uh, amend the initiative to remove unlawful provisions. Um, there's oftentimes some political pressures not to do something like that with when there are citizen initiated ordinance that are presented to to the town um, another item would action potential action item for which the, the time would be somewhat short on would be to submit a an ordinance addressing these to go to an election at the same time as the initiative um, and that could be as comprehensive or, or broad as uh, or, or narrow as, as time might allow for. Um, at the last Board of Trustees meeting, it was kind of left unclear where the um, exactly how to proceed or the uh, Mr. Bruner and the petitioners committee and proceed with um, with the initiative, but he and I had some follow up discussions and 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 um, about um, you know, you know what Mr. Bruner might be willing to do with respect to the initiative. And I guess let me pause there for a moment to say that um, at the last meeting, there were some questions as to, well, what is this, in, in my view, as the, as the town attorney, what would be the scope of the authority of the petitioners committee to take actions with respect to the form of, of that initiative ordinance? And while Title 31 is uh, the, the municipal government um, statutes are silent on that with respect to citizens initiative, the, the parallel statute as it relates to statewide initiatives provides that um, the petitioners committee, it's, it's recalled something else on the state level, but the petitioners committee has the authority to withdraw a petition uh, so long as there is that statement, verified statement of withdrawal submitted at least 60 days prior to an election. Um, there is not any authority to actually amend the ordinance once, submit, once submitted based on the, um, you know, the signatures of on the petition, but the petitioners committee could withdraw that petition. And, and one reason for doing so might be if the town were to adopt um, some legislation or, or, or in, in form of an ordinance that might get at those, those same issues driving the initiative in a way that would be satisfactory to the petitioners committee. So having said all that, um, and I have uh, was connected with Mr. Bruner today and he indicated to me, and I'm, I'm sure Mr. Bruner can speak for himself here in, the, in this meeting, that he would be willing to withdraw the initiative if uh, the board were willing to um, uh, adopt an ordinance that would uh, address uh, a, a more narrow ordinance that would address two things. And that would be number one, to have um, records that may be withheld from 
inspection under CORA as they relate to infrastructure and finance and concern and concern data, that those that, that those um, be determined to be disclosed. In other words, say the, the, the town the board of trustees could take away that discretion and those would be things that would be available um, and, and, uh, upon a quarter request as public records. Uh, the second item related to access of the trustees to records and to infrastructure and more as a policy statement and um, there, there might be a little uh, nuancing there that would need to be sorted out but those are the two main issues that were in the ordinance. And so I, I would wanted to inform council that one other option in addition to those that were in my memo and I just went through would be for the town for the board of trustees to not take action on the initiative and that would allow it to be go to a or not adopt the initiative but instead to refer it to the voters for a special election on May 3rd and that May 3rd date is to coordinate with the county and and um, which is the special election date and, and save money for the town on conducting election. So it would be to refer that to the voters for that date. But uh, then it could direct me to prepare an ordinance in line with what Mr. Bruner had proposed for its consideration at a meeting, be, a special meeting to be held next week. Um, you know, any action that the, the board would take tonight on this option would really just be direction and not necessarily a decision on that ordinance, but it would at least place itself in the, the potential position to take the action on such an ordinance. And um, based on Mr. Uh, Bruner's representations, if that ordinance were to be passed, that he would take timely action to withdraw that uh, initiative uh, prior to the, the, the deadline um, to do so, which would be May, I'm sorry, would, which would be March 4th. So that was a uh, that was a lot, and uh, I hope you, everyone on the board was able to review my memo prior to this meeting and, and understands its, its options here. And um, again, one of them being, just one of them being that last one that, that I, I, I outlined. And so if there's any questions related to that, I'm happy to take them. Thank you. All right, questions from the board? I have a question. Sure. Listen. So I'm trying to sort through this. I have your memo, uh, Jeff. So you were suggesting that uh, part B would be direct the town attorney to prepare an ordinance for its consideration at a special meeting to be held on February 28th. So we're going to feedback potentially on that part of the meeting, um, addressing the two narrow issues. So the point being that the, the language you drafted that was appended to your memo would serve as the basis for the ordinance to be considered on the 28th. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, the, the I think what you have in your hand is a, a, a message that I sent to the board today. Yes. Uh, my conversation with Mr. Bruner. In, in the packet, there's a separate memo. But yes, that language that's in the second half of my memo to the board was what um, Mr. Bruner had sent to me as what he was thinking the form of that ordinance would be, understanding that um, based on our conversation, there may be a few things that I would want to revise to make sure it comports with uh, with CORA, CORA and is otherwise just kind of in a, a good form for something that's going to live within the code. Okay, okay. Uh, sure. I'll, I'll let someone else ask questions. We have other questions from the board? Okay, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Ms. Smith. Well, then I'm, so I'm taking this that if if uh, Bill is willing to not put his initiative on the ballot, we essentially are promising to adopt the essence that, he, that the two of you talked about, or that you, that Mr. Bruner provided to you that is in your today memo, right? A little bit of a reverse order. So okay. unless the board takes, adopts the, initiated ordinance tonight, it's going to go to, it, it will be set for the special election. But there's an, still an opportunity for Mr. Bruner to withdraw it. And what he has indicated is that he would be willing to withdraw it in the event that the town adopted an ordinance that generally contained the items that are, that, that those narrow two issues that I just described and that were in that email. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
So let me make sure we have the sequence correct, that the board tonight would let the ordinance go to public vote and that we would vote on, or you let the citizens initiative go to public vote and that on Monday, we would vote on the ordinance as outlined, correct? Correct. And then, and then if passed, Mr. Bruner indicated he'd be willing to then timely withdraw that petition or that, that, that uh, the initiative so that it would know, despite it going to a public vote, there's still the opportunity to withdraw it. So then it wouldn't. Okay. Yes. So that gives him some time to see our sincerity. Yeah. And if we aren't, if we turn out to be insincere, it can still go to the voters. Yeah. Yeah, or, or if the towns, if the trustees simply determine that this isn't in the best interest of the town or whatever reason, if, if you choose not to adopt that at a special meeting, that narrow ordinance, there still would be the ability that that the larger ordinance would still be going to the public vote. Yes. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Thompson. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, I'm wondering if if the citizens initiative moves to the public vote in order to pass um, as written um, would that put the town in any situations where we where action was needed um, due to some of the the language issues um, in the current initiative yeah um so good question. And as we discussed at the last board meeting, in my view, there are a number of things in the, I'll just call it the larger ordinance that uh, are unlawful. There's things that are in conflict with CORA and then with respect to municipal court jurisdiction, there are issues that are unconstitutional. So I think it would place the board in the position, if, if passed, it would pl place, place the board in a position of um, needing to determine um, or to address those things. And there might be a couple of ways to do that. One could be to have a to court declare rather than, than me, have a court declare what things are unlawful or not. Or the board could take action to amend that legislation. Um, there's the ability to do that. If, a, if, if this becomes part of the code, it's part of the code. And the, and the board has the ability to make amendments to its code without taking it to a public vote. But when there are things that are uh, become part of the code through an initiative, a lot of time there are pressures to not amend, amend those, particularly not immediately after that they're adopted. But in my view, they would present some problems. The larger, or, the larger ordinance would present some problems to the town because in my view, several of the provisions are unlawful. Any other questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Johnson. I guess not a question, but just a comment. Um, I think it's I think it's unfortunate that we waited this long to decide all this because I, I think we could have, and I appreciate you, Mr. Bruner, being willing to negotiate, work out a possible ordinance, because I think that's the best solution for the town. I think if we would have had a little more time, we could have worked out this ordinance now and, you know, had a, had a decision. But, but anyway, thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Yeah. Ms. Smith, do you have a comment? Well, I guess, um, no, I guess I was going to propose a motion that would have been, but we don't, we don't have the motion. Yeah. Oh, well, no. You have to set the date of the election. Yeah. Well, I'm. And we do. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I mean, I would suggest uh, taking any public comment there might be on this, but then right. in the event there were to be a motion, or when there, if there is one form of a motion, could be to refer the initiative to a public vote at a special election to be held on May 3rd, uh, 2022. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, let's take public comment. Well, I, I have one. Sure. <laughs> First, looking at the screen here, I don't see the, the podium on the, the video feed. Is that right? It, yeah, I, 
It's I can't see you. <laughs> just, just because okay. we've been talking on the phone. Ah, okay, we got Hello. It. Hey. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I hope this works out. Uh, basically, it is uh, things. You're not going to hide any more water studies if the board had ever hidden them. And I think the board has in the past uh, tried to hide some of these things. I don't think that's right, and this will eliminate that option. Those things will be public. Uh, and uh, the other part, I want to make it clear that the, uh, uh, the and this is for you guys, uh, which is for us. Uh, only those, um, the board shall have uh, broad access to all the records and the facilities of the town. So I just want to be totally clear going in. That's, that's, that's what our, the committee feels would justify withdrawing the issue. So. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Brewer. Thank you. All right. Any other public comment? Oh, right. but, but, Madam Mayor, sorry, if I could interrupt. Oh. And I, if I could just ask, uh, Mr. Bruner, could you just confirm that as I relayed our conversation to the board what was accurate and you agree with that? I think so. I, unfortunately, I was unaware that the memo had arrived and I hadn't actually read it, but I, I think we have an understanding, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Do, do you, do, have I said something that makes you question my understanding of? Uh, no, I just wanted to, I just wanted to make sure, and, and you know, you, you, that I wasn't putting words in your, in your mouth that you'd and the petitioners committee would be willing to withdraw. I think you've, you've described it quite well, and I think the board is even more receptive to your words than they are to mine. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Keenan, you had your hand up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to commend everyone in the room. This is the way I think that we should be doing the town's business. We're very cordial friendly, where everyone loves each other. We love this town, we love each other. I think Jesus wants to talk about this. Um, and I think it's great. And you know, someone who's been in this town longer than I have reminded me, what well, didn't remind me, educated me, this water situation has been going on for as long as they've lived in this town, over 20 years. So I think that this is a time where we, we get together and we actually get everything. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank Chief. you very much. Anything else from the public? Yes, Mr. Mark. Um, it sounds as though there may be some sort of revolution at hand. Uh, I think that's great news. Um, I do hope that you can all take this process as a learning that um, maybe when a citizen brings something to your attention, that it deserves your time and uh, response so that not everyone has to create an ordinance and petition to uh, get your attention to get it to this point. Um, I think that there's a lot of things that have been brought before you that fall by the wayside simply because people don't have the drives that Mr. Bruner has to see them addressed. And um, I'm one of them and I appreciate your attention to a couple of various other subjects to go back and look to these. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything else we can put? Yes, Brianna. My name is Brianna Greer, Solid Solution Geosciences, currently a contractor for the town of Paleonia. I just want to, I have not read this entire resolution, but on hearing what I just heard, I just want to express some concern that it be very clearly stated that it is the board as a whole or whether individuals not with the board and without board approval have access to facilities and that that access not occur through contacting employees of contractors to gain that access. There has to be a capital A outside contractors. Contractors are not authorized unless the contractor is authorized. I am not to provide such access. When and we can discuss this further later, but it creates an untenable risk situation for your contractors if people are randomly coming up asking for tours of facilities those contractors do not own. 
you do not let your, you don't ask your neighbor's plumber for a tour of your neighbor's house, right? That's inappropriate. So I just want to make sure that, that you all are considering that in this resolution as you approve it and as you move forward as a citizenry. It also puts the town at risk when individuals contact contractors because there is no defined risk pathway and there is no defined authority pathway. But that be an important part of the idea that all board and committee members have access to a facility. To also check with state regulations regarding how these facilities are governed and consider that every access to water facilities has potential for negative action and negative consequence, that not every person who is on your board or on your committee is going to be well-intended. Thank you. Anything else? Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, I think you should listen to those words very carefully. It's, we're not talking about our neighbor's house and our plumber. We're talking about our water system and our board of trustees. Um, um, please, no, no comments if you haven't been recognized by the chair. I want to be very clear that the, this, this ordinance uh, says that each trustee shall have broad access to all the records of the town and the town's facilities. Now, how that broad access is defined is going to be a further conversation. But uh, uh, this board and boards before it and boards before that have been waiting for a tour of the water facility for a long number of years, okay? And it never happens. And actually, I don't think it can happen as a board because that's a public meeting. And then you're going to have everybody in town drinks and then go through behind. It. So it's going to have, to, if, if you choose to do the town's facilities, I think you're going to have to do it in probably groups of two uh, or one. And you as trustees should have the right to view those facilities. Uh, if, you know, it's the policy you're going to have to set if there are ill-intentioned people on the board. Oh, my God. But, you know, you, you might need to deal with that. Uh, but that's that's the intent of this ordinance that you're going to be. That's the deal. That's the deal. So be careful. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Jeff. Oh yeah, Mr. Conklin. And, and, and one quick follow-up to that comment is that, you know, with that broad access to infrastructure, I, I think, you know, one thing that we might provide a little detail, more detail in, in this ordinance for consideration by the, the board would be that it would need to be pursuant to the appropriate procedure. And so, you know, it's not that every trustees gets the keys to, to the water plant. Those visits need to be coordinated and done in an, an appropriate manner. And um, uh, so I think that is also implied within that, that understanding, but I will um, um, uh, work on that more uh, before this comes to you guys, if, if, that, if that's what you wish uh, uh, next week. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Patterson, I think you had your hand up. Oh, I'm well, sorry. I just, I just wanted to uh, follow up on Brianna's point and I, I agree with quite a bit of what you're saying. And as a result, I have several motions I would like to propose when we get to okay. this part of the agenda right. to clarify how and when uh, trustees should be allowed to be on tours. Okay, so I have three of those that hopefully can address some of it and that would maybe help Mr. Conklin in his, if, if they pass, give you some ideas of, of a way to maybe go about some of this. Okay. Thank you. Great. One other thing. The other issues of uh, uh, interpretation of ordinances and the way ordinances are enforced, that issue won't go away. Um, it's, we're kicking it down the road again. And I want to say, uh, I really hope that Mr. Knudsen can come forward with some information about the, help me say the word correctly, ombudsman? Yeah, ombudsman. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting idea. I'd really like to hear more about that because I think it's something that the town sorely needs. Uh, that's the end of my comment. All right, Ms. Patterson. I just wanted to quickly say, um, these citizens' petitions don't happen in a vacuum. 
they're happening for a reason. And I think that's sort of what we have to back up and address. Like there's a lot of um, there's a lot of trust that has to be, you know, re rekindled. And there's a lot of transparency that has to happen. And that's why these things are happening. Things are not working. So this is the recourse. They're not, um, that's why the water, um, when the water debacle happened, there wasn't enough uh, questions being answered. Um, it, there wasn't transparency. So the water moratorium was a result of that. And now this is another citizen's petition as a result of things that are not being taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Keenan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I would like, I, when Bill is saying that it would be a town uh, a town meeting if everyone on the board went up to inspect the facilities. <laughs> I'd ask the lawyer if that's correct. I don't think it is. It is correct. It is what I suggest is, is that I do think that everyone should go up together. And, and I would um, suggest that if it is a town, consider it a town meeting, offer to have the people that want to participate here in this room and you can do that by a video link. Because I think it's a good idea that everyone gets on the same page and this is a learning situation. So, thank you very much. I have an answer for that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, anything else? I think Bill spoke very well. <laughs> okay, anything? Yes, Ms. Watson. So, uh, Suzanne Watson, I, I don't want to pass this to death. especially if there's some answers on the board. Um, but when we're talking about having to have a town meeting so the trustees can see the, it's never gonna happen. And that's, that's been the problem in the past. There's been um, tours that have been um, promised and they just never happen. So, you know, um, we, it's not only the trustees, we have boards like the Water Advisory Board and they're authorized to do studies and make findings. So um, realize there's a, there, there are boards that are authorized by law, by our laws to do this. So you have to acknowledge that, but it makes it more facile or fast facile, you know, easier to um, implement. Like if it needs to be done a little bit more quickly to have to coordinate meeting, you know how hard it is to coordinate meeting times for everybody. And I think there is a place for, um, for a general tour, but I think, you know, there are certain board members who might be on a committee or heavily involved in something that I, I think we can probably, um, and of course there has to be some sort of a pathway to make that happen correctly. But um, yeah, I, I support keeping something like that in the ordinance, thanks. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else? Yes, Mr. Pierce. Um, Mr. Compton, I'm wondering if there's a possibility of a proper gathering of trustees to do a tour when no decisions are being made. It's not, we're not doing anything <clears throat> legislatively. We're being informed almost like in a work session. I'm trying to understand what the legal prohibitions are of doing something like that. Sure, so you know, un under the open meetings law, anytime there are two or more, more than two uh, trustees that would be gathered for the purpose of conducting public business, that it's required that it be noticed and open to the public. So work sessions are, are meetings that are open to the, to the public. Um, site visits that are often, you know, sometimes if you have a site visit done in conjunction with, you know, other town business that, that, that would uh, typically need to be noticed. Um, now, sometimes, you know, if trustees are gathered for social occasions or if there are chance encounters and things like that, you know, those, those wouldn't constitute a meeting. The open meetings law, as you suggested, does say that there's kind of needs to be the possibility of legislative action, but I would say as a general matter, it's practice for, uh, for those uh, meetings to be noticed um, and, and open to the public. Now, I, I feel like 
not to, uh, to with respect to this particular issue, it might be in, in doing conducting a, a site visit or tour of the water plant or another facility. I, I, I feel like we're getting a bit off topic with the the or with what's what's at hand here, and and I may have you know, there's I could I have some or can provide to the board some later suggestions as to some good practices, perhaps how to to organize and conduct those things um, down the road. Okay, thank you, Mr. Coughlin. Yeah, so this is a later discussion. Yes, Mr. Thompson. Uh, I have a maybe a bit higher level question that's involved with this, which is, what is the protocol for the public to come to our attorney to have these conversations? Is there a process in which that can happen that it's official or can they reach out to our attorney and have those, can we reach out to our attorney and have those conversations as members of the public? You know, again, that, I think that's a discussion outside of this current discussion. We can address that, but I think right now we need to focus on the agenda guide. All right. Anything else on the board? Yeah. I don't know if this is outside of the scope as well, but we did have a water treatment plant tour, which Trustee Mech and I attended, and I believe others yeah, Mr. were invited. Bear Mr. Bear and I have done a tour as well. Um, tour how, how was that conducted? That went through the town administrator yeah. Yeah. who invited just us two, or was everyone invited? Uh, it there was a couple different meeting, a couple different tours that were held, and there were um, the advisory water committee was invited to one, um, and board members and um, others were invited to the others. Yeah. And this was yes. for the wildlife corridor, so I, I don't know why yes. we can't go through the town administrator to set right. these things up. And I think this is a discussion yes. for um, later on in the agenda. I mean, we're going to discuss yeah. this okay. anyway. Thank so you. that's when we should be taking this. So. Would somebody like to make a motion to send the um, the initiative to the public for uh, election on May third? I would like to make a motion to send this initiative to uh, for the uh, public vote on May the third. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? So is this ignoring the? This is just the. Uh, the functory thing we have to yeah, do. Yeah, this is what we have. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, all right. Is the board ready to vote? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That motion passes. So, just one last note. Um, I hope that I will be able to review the official language that you come up with well in advance of their voting on it. Yeah, and or, or some of the things. Uh, yeah, and Madam Mayor, I, I just if the board could could at the, since this is the direction you want to go, but if you guys could uh, make a motion or just formally direct me to to work on that ordinance and bring it back to you on on February twenty eighth, and and I'd be happy, Bill, to reach out with you once I've put that together. Okay, can we get a motion? Hopefully, more than an hour or two before the yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can we get a motion to direct the attorney to write this ordinance? Yes, I'll make a motion to direct the attorney to write this ordinance and for submittal to us prior to the 228 meeting. Okay, do I have a second on that? Second. Sorry. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion passes. All right, let's go on then to uh, red line ordinance. Oh, yes, Ms. Matt, I just so we discussed this in a, a meeting um, last August, I believe, and there were some, um, when Mr. Bruner first brought this before the board, we discussed it, and a few of the other ideas, Just I'm just throwing this out there as part of a, a, a gesture to remind Mr., to let Mr. Bruner know that certainly I, as a trustee, am very interested in um, increasing transparency. One of them was a two- date stamp draft and uh, stamp draft documents as such for clarity. Um, 
uh, identify work product as such that it's subject to change, um, utilize ClearGov more. Um, we do have checks on ClearGov right now, but they need to be cleaned up and um, perhaps maybe be a little more descriptive in what the checks are for. Also, we had talked about, and um, it was uh, requested that the staff provide information on getting our emails, all emails made public. And I think we should continue to pursue, pursue that. Um, uh, the other, the last thing I'd like to recommend is maybe an ad hoc committee be created to review the uh, town records policy, which is in ClearGov, and ensure that it is up to date with CORA Open Records Act, and uh, just still clean it up. So, just want to throw those things out there. Okay. All right. Well, do you want to make a motion about setting up an ad hoc committee? Oh, sure. Um, I move that the uh, Board create an ad hoc committee to review and ensure that the town records policy is up to date with current CORA records. And just uh, look for any inconsistencies or um, redundancies. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. Discussion by the board. Sounded to me like that's what Mr. Crumpton was going to propose in this amendment that was drafting about our records. Uh, Cora, he said, make that sure that we are in line with Cora. Yeah. No, I don't think so. No, I don't believe so. That he's what he's doing is specifically for the initiative, and that we, you know, having a uh, somebody look at our records request our policies and make sure that they're on the core of that is not what our team is doing. Okay. Further discussion from the board? Okay, discussion from the public? Yeah. I, I was just gonna provide that clarification that what Trustee Mech's talking about is the um, larger uh, open record request policy that's on the website and that has um, uh, the Above and beyond the statute, policy had always just been internal. It was handled how wh whichever clerk um, was the clerk at the time handled the policy. And um, that policy was the policy that I adhered to um, as clerk that I put into writing and brought to the board because one of the statute requirements is that if you that your policy be published um, so that people have access to it through your website. So that's the policy that is uh, that Trustee Mack is talking about that the committee would be looking at, um, I believe with, with um, my inclusion in that as holding the clerk position as well um, on the extended definition of how the policy is um, adhered to at Town Hall. Okay. All right. Any further comment? Okay, anything from the public? Yes, Ms. Watson. Um, I'd just like a little bit more clarification about when the committee would be formed well, um, by the way. Well, so that's what we will decide. After we, yeah, after we pass the motion. Okay, so you're talking about it tonight. Correct. Okay, great. Correct. All right, all ready to vote? Okay, all in favor of creating an ad hoc committee to look at the records policy of the town and to assure that it complies with CORA. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. So we need people to volunteer to be on this committee. Okay, Ms. Mech is one. I will volunteer as well. Okay. And so then we can, we will get together and set up a meeting and go uh, we'll forward. All right, great. All right. Now let's move on to the. I have a question about the committee. Yes, Ms. Watson. So I was just wondering if a member of the public could be invited to be on the committee too. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to volunteer Bill Bruner, but um, <laughs> well, this, the, yeah. the public is welcome to come to our meetings. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So you will um, post meetings, maybe on sure. the bulletin board. Yeah, I need front. to uh, set it up first. Okay, which is unusual mm -hmm. for committees to do, but it would be nice to see that. Sure. Public posting. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Now, on to the red line ordinance 
2021-2022. So we have in front of us the advisory water committee ordinance that has been amended to make the changes that have been suggested. Any questions from the board about the changes or anything included in this ordinance? Yes, Mr. Kennedy. It's just so much easier to deal with a red line than to have to look at two documents. So thanks for giving us, I hope that all of our future things come in this format because it helps us make decisions. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from the board? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so um, I know that Tammy, uh, Christine Beck and I worked on this, but I have to just add in the, on the first page with the list of whereas's, I had not read what Colorado uh, Revised Statute 3135 said prior to this. And it is the creation of a uh, special governing body of a city or town that has a power to create a non political local legislative body designated as a board of commissioners. So, this is not a, a statute we want to be referencing under this. this this okay. citizen committee. This this is creation of a separate water board that, okay. that oversees the water of a town outside of the trustees. Okay. So having read that and went, oh, so what I would like to propose in addition to our red line <laughs> is to remove the second whereas. Okay. And on the first red line whereas, stop. Let's see, I'm sorry. Um, Whereas with the adoption of ordinance 2020-09, the town created an advisory water committee, period. Okay. Semicolon and, and then the last whereas. Okay. So great. Anyway, apologies for not um, having noticed that first. And I thought, oh, I should read that statute. Oh, no, <laughs> we don't really want that. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Seeing nothing. Anything from the public? Yes, Mr. Bruner. Again, apologies for talking all your time. Um, the, I want to call your attention to the very end of the red line ordinance uh, with the uh, restriction on the chair of the board voting, except in a tie and uh, burdening them with full uh, Roberts rules of order. Um, I just think that it's an unreasonable burden for a board of that size, and that makeup, uh, that there's no reason that the chair of that committee shouldn't be able to vote. The original question was, should the staff people be able to vote and the, and the, and the trustee? And somehow that, this has morphed into a prohibition on the, the chair of the, board, of the committee voting on things. And I don't understand where that direction came from. And I think it's completely inappropriate. And if it's appropriate here, I think you're going to have to go back where you probably, to be consistent, might go back and burden all of your committees with what Robert's rules of order. Uh, I, I just think it's it's unreasonable to expect them to even know how that works. So I, I would urge someone to uh, make a motion to strike that part out of there uh, and let this board try to just work it out itself uh, without having to, to spend all their time on Robert's rules of order. It'll be a burden. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I agree with Mr. Brunner. <laughs> I just lost some teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to make a motion I to take that, 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 that part out? That last sentence in uh, section 2 10 40. Uh, so, do you want to take out the Roberts Rules of Rules of yes. Board on two? So, the last two sentences on page two under section 2 10 40. Uh, yeah. So then does the staff vote? No, it has it doesn't say anything about voting. It takes the Roberts rules of order out and that the um, chair shall only be entitled to vote on a time. All right, do I have a second on it? Second. Okay, further discussion from the board. All right. Anything else from the public? All right, so we have a motion to strike the last two sentences of section 2-10-40 from the red line ordinance. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion passes. All 
All right, is there anything else we want to change on this prior to passing or to yeah, having a motion? Change that to suggest. Right, and they will be incorporated and we can incorporate them in the motion as well. <laughs> anything else? I guess the only other question is should it read Bo Nerland or should it read Jeff Conklin? Oh, it should read Jeff Conklin. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff, we're signing your name to something. <laughs> yes, Mr. Conklin. I think he was. I think I think it's okay to leave Bo on this. I think he was involved oh, okay. in drafting of it and, and, and so forth. And um, so I, I think that's fine to leave. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Anything else from the public? All right. Hearing none. Can we get a motion to accept ordinance one dash? 2022 with the changes as noted. Okay. <laughs> Motion to adopt ordinance. I'm sorry, what was the number? Uh, 21, 2022. 20, 20, 20. Thank you. Motion to adopt ordinance 01-20-22 to include the suggestions made to the whereas entries. Okay, do I have a second on that? Second. Further discussion from the board? All right, hearing that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion passes. All right, next up on our agenda is review and possible action on SSG contract extension. That has been included in the packet. We have, we are going to pass our 45 day emergency situation and it is being proposed that we go to a month to month contract with SSG while we are waiting to see if we can get another ORC. Any questions from the board for either uh, Ms. Ferguson or Ms. Greer, would you be able to answer some questions? Sure. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay, seeing so you know, that. Yeah, so, okay, Ms. Mark. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. Okay. Oh, that's so funny. Um, so my my question was looking at the task summary, and it was the plant checks task 40, um, just the way it was worded, will remain available for occasional limited daily plant checks. And my question was, is this to go beyond April into the rest of the year or simply through the end of this extension? Or amendment. Uh, the intent, excuse me. Can you yes, please. Uh, the intent of the contract is to simply fill the gap. Right now, you only have two employees who are only uh, very, very lowly trained at all on these plans or on re reporting requirements or familiar with interacting with an ORC. Of, uh, I have a couple that I'm working on trying to get you scopes to fill in until your RFP is filled. Um, my, my intent here is to work myself out of a job. Uh, that's always my intent in any kind of environmental <laughs> consulting is that I want to fix the problem and leave. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Moore is unwilling to continue beyond February 28th for the town or for SSG, uh, partly because this is considered a high risk scenario. Um, it's a very high risk scenario. Uh, um, so no, that is so that because you have two employees, you have holidays, and someone has to check the plant every both plants every day to ensure safe water delivery and that there will be no impacts or limited impacts to environmental uh, to aquatic life in the creek. That you can plan ahead and say, hey, could you come in and walk the plant really quick? And so that we can create the forms that we've been working on so that a remote ORC and ideally the board and the committee, once it's set up, can see what's been happening at the plant uh, without having to interact with SCADA, which you don't want everyone interacting with the SCADA. Uh, you want that to be pretty limited. Uh, so the intent is just simply to be like, hey, so and so got sick. We, the other person had someone die. Who can check the plant today? And I think that there's a lot of room within the water committee and within your discussions of um, how the committee and board should access the town, access the facility through the town, 
uh, that maybe someone in the committee or board can fill that. But right now, these processes don't exist, as have been made, made publicly evident in the past week. My only question was, were you intending to go beyond April with that service? Basically? Well, frankly, or were you, it's, it's I'm not, not clear. I'm not, no, the, no, the, the, this contract only goes to the end of April. That's, that's all yes. I wanted <laughs> to know. Because yes. the way it was worded, it wasn't clear to me. No, the contract okay. is only through okay. April. And, and frankly, I, um, based on the next agenda item, I'm not sure I would follow that contract. I'm not sure I would sign that at this point. I'm not sure I would sign Ooh, thank you. All right. Anything else from the public? Yes, Ms. Nora. Um, I'm going to uh, recommend that you guys add this to the uh, consent agenda because uh, at this juncture, you don't really have a choice as to whether or not um, you accept this contract. Well, the consent agenda is already. That I know. That's, that, that was what I was, that's what I'm saying is that um, this is what I would have added. And wow. so. Uh, uh, to accept it and it so probably you know, to uh, correct the use. Yeah. All right, yes, Mr. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't doubt uh, Brianna's good intentions. Uh, and I think her fellow Josh is a really stand up guy. But if what's presented in the packet is the entire contract, given the next item on the agenda, I would question as a veteran of many contracts, whether there is enough specific, uh, enough detail in this contract to avoid misunderstandings of the future. Okay, thank you. All right, yes, Um, I'm really concerned about the new staff on boarding. I mean, this contract is for two months, and I don't know how possibly two complete novices are really going to be able to absorb the information that's going to be presented to them. We're spending money on this new staff on boarding, and I'm wondering if there's some way to capture the information a bit because we have no idea what's even gonna happen with these new employees. Um, so I, I just think it's a real shaky situation right now with our public work staffing and the level um, and the level of uh, experience and expertise and education perhaps um, that the people who have recently been hired possess. I mean, I'm just really concerned about that. And I'm just wondering if there's some way we can capture some of this information that we're paying for, um, because you could potentially have to start over again in three months. And I don't know, we're gonna have a brand new ORC maybe into the future here. And there's gonna be some um, learning that they're gonna have to undertake. And I'm, I'm just, it's, a, it's pretty rocky to me. It, I just don't understand how you're gonna facilitate this smoothly. Uh, over the next few months. Like, I really believe really that needs some discussion. Thank you. Yeah, I had another question that was under task 20 and it was a reference to the temporary circuit ORC. So is there, uh, this is a question for Corinne, is there uh, an effort to try to find a circuit ORC? Yes. It would be on site, not yes. uh, the, the previous ORC. Correct. So, and that you're looking at that as someone to have on board before you hire the con the, the long longer the ten month. Yes. Okay. We, we still need, yes because we still need someone operating the CDPHE only allows a thirty day. Um, you have to replace your ORC and report within thirty days. So with um, Josh leaving beginning of March, we only have until the end of March to have someone else. And so that person and and their um, cost and scope of work and all of that would have to come to the board. Um, we would bring that to the board and provide you that information for approval and they would operate in that interim and hopefully potentially if a good fit would be one that would be um, submitting an RFP for the long term as well. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, we're just finding out tonight that the RFP has been posted and then I saw that language. So there are quite a few segmented moving parts going on. So yes. thank you for that clarification. Okay, anything else from the board? Yes, Mr. Thompson. Um, my question is, does the scope of work for the project um, 
indicate what the timing of this agreement is or I'm not seeing the two months written into this document and I'm wondering if it needs to be added or if that's referenced on the scope of work. Can you answer that question, Ms. Greer? It's in the budget. <coughs> Did you find that in the budget? It's just, uh, there's a budget page which reflects that. Okay. It does reflect it. But... I just got, I don't know if we would like the time as a, as the town, does it serve the town to have the timing clearly defined in the work that we're doing? Mayor, Mayor? Yes, please. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the, the contract is based on a number of hours. Certainly those hours would not be exceeded at any time, even into April. And the cost estimate page uh, indicates when it's anticipated that those hours might be spent with the bulk of them being spent in March to continue to facilitate sampling. I am a DMR progress and official for the town at this point, so submitting just starting monitoring reports um, and it's anticipated, but yes, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of in the air right now. We all know this. Uh, it's anticipated then that the hours would decline into April. As your as, as your people were trained, as the ORC contracts were worked out, as the fulcrum forms, all the online forms provided transparency for oversight for remote ORC. So, as the um, work order is written, um, we're operating on the hourly rate and the total um, expenditure. And okay. All right. Thank you for the clarification. Any other questions or comments from the board? All right, can we get a motion to approve the part, uh, solid solution geosciences contract contract extension? Madam Mayor, I move that we accept the extension of SSG uh, contract. Do I hear a second? Okay. All right, further discussion? All right. We have a motion to accept the extension of the Solicide Solid Solution Geosciences extension. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion passes. All right, let's move on to the next item, the uh, letter to the Board of Trustees from SSG. Okay, SSG has sent us their, their letter about their concerns with the water, with the visits, unauthorized visits to the uh, water treatment plant. And we have a reply from Ms. Smith on that. So, Ms. Smith, you said you had some motions you wanted to. Uh, I do. Um, my initial uh, drafting of the motions was done before I understood that the RFP was going to publish. So let me just read to you what I had, and then we need to modify it to reflect uh, real time. My first motion is that the ORC RFP shall include a requirement for the contracted ORC to conduct tours for the trustees of the 2 million gallon, 1 million gallon and sewer plant to be scheduled during the month of May, 2022. The ORC RFP shall also contain the requirement to hold one meeting respectively for the public to tour both water treatment plants and the sewer treatment plant one time a year. Public tours shall be scheduled during the months of August and September. This task shall be included in the contract for the ORC hired by the town county. So at this point, I don't think it's too late to, uh, it's not in the RFP, but it might not be too late to add to a contract. Oh, with your time, because I really think, um, again, I learned that that plant was invaluable, and I so apologize, and it really kind of was, Rihanna, when she did her first presentation, really encouraged the town and citizens to go to the treatment plant, so I apologize for what we did to Josh, I did not mean to do that, he was absolutely wonderful with the information shared. And from my perspective, being a trustee is not the same as just a citizen. You know, we're responsible for all of this. So 
Uh, with that in mind, I want to clarify that, and I'm thinking this could help with uh, the motion, the initiative, or the, the new ordinance mm -hmm. for Bill. I think it's really important that we all do have an opportunity to see, see these plants. And I will rewrite this to um, remove the RFP if, if you all agree. But I had a second one. And well, actually, I actually have three. The second one was motion that the RFP include a provision that the contract ORC will provide a report on all the previous months repair activities needed and completed, other repairs identified that will be completed and maintenance schedules completed to be incorporated into the meeting agenda packet for the first meeting of every month. So this would be included in the contract for the ORC hired by the town of Palinia. And I do that because it's really important we know what is going on with these repairs. And my last one is motion that after April 5th, 2022, all current and future trustees be provided an orientation that includes a tour of all town owned properties, including both water treatment plants, wastewater plant, town office, public works, and all equipment uh, in town. Of, uh, anyway, I'll continue. Again, because there is no process in place for new trustees to see anything except this room. And I think it's really important that we create uh, a very standardized orientation process that does provide new trustees, all of that. So those are the three motions which I would have to reword to some extent, but that, that is my um, proposed solution to allow for trustees under a, an organized um, uh, procedure, administrative procedure to be able to see these plans. So, what would you like to do with all that? Okay, well, let's get some input from the board. Let's mm -hmm. start yeah. there. Okay, anything from the board about the... Yeah, Mr. John? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I think all this should be going through the town administrator. And then the town administrator goes down the ladder. Well, that would be part of it. I mean, this would have to be going through. I didn't, so I didn't hear anything about the town administrator. Well, the, from my perspective, these the contractors work with the administrator. So, right. I mean, so we, we can shouldn't be going it. to the contractor. We should only be going to the town administrator. Correct. Well, in this in this regard, I'm talking about what the contractor is going to be expected to do and and has to be paid for. It's up to us behind the scenes to develop the internal policy. That's that's what I was thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. And do you agree it should be going through the town administrator? Yes, I think so. Good. Okay. Other comments or questions from the board? Yes, Ms. Mann. Yeah, I would like to make a comment, just a general comment. I am not an evil conniving opportunist like this letter makes me out to be. And I have the greatest respect for you, Ms. Greer, but I felt that part of this was a personal attack. We did not use our trustee position for personal gain nor to harm anyone. We did not have a nefarious plan. We also had not heard yet from anyone about scheduling a tour. We saw an opportunity and we took it. And I am very happy I did. It's bringing us to this so that we can better understand the laws. And when we come to the, the next part of the agenda where we have to approve some expenses, I could take a picture of the plan and point out to everybody exactly what is being done, exactly what, what is being talked about. So again, I, I do apologize for all of this inconvenience and for putting you on the spot and certainly for putting more on the spot. Um, we did not need to inconvenience him. So with that, I, I got so much value out of this that I hope that everybody, everybody gets to do a similar tour. It was invaluable. And for that reason, I do not regret it. It was invaluable. So yes, I am now really pushing for everybody to see this. So yeah, I would like to move forward with these, with these motions. I think it's a, it's invaluable. It, to see it is completely different than to hear somebody talk about it. So. Yeah, we're going to let Mr. Thompson ask his question first. I'm sorry, having that address personally and that having it addressed to you as a lot of response of order, I do want to kind of respond and inject your reservation and clarification question. I, I missed the last part of that. I'm sorry. 
It's my understanding that comments are supposed to be directed to the mayor, not to, to me. Yeah, this is true. It was, again, I took an opportunity. I'm sorry, I'm an opportunist. <laughs> okay, Mr. Tess, small town. I just, I, I think one thing that this illustrates is um, how important it is to be very careful with the way that we write the scopes of work for this kind of project. And if we need interaction or tours or things of that nature with our contractors, they're specifically dictated into the scopes as, as the communication tool between our town and our consultants. And so in the future, if we want our consultants to give us tours or sit in our meetings, that we should be very clear in the scope of work that that's our expectation. So that when this kind of things happen, we have an avenue to go to our consultants and ask them for these kinds of services. Okay. Yes, Mr. Kayser. Um, I'm only one member of this board and any action on the board or any action that we take should be done as a whole board, not as an individual. And that's where I take um, issue with uh, the way this went. Now, I did get a, get a call from one of the board members that went on the tour, was very enthusiastic, encouraged me to get a hold of the contractor. And in discussion with the contractor about setting up a time for a tour, I realized, wait a minute, there's some other people that need to be involved because this contractor is being paid to trade our new people, not being paid to give me a tour. So I closed the conversation saying I will get a hold of the mayor and the town administrator. So what this does is this really gives us more. I'm glad this came up because it gives us a better idea of our role as trustees and how we work as a whole board, not as an individual. And so like one of the things that's uh, very hard for people to grasp is we need the nuts and bolts on that. We need to understand that part of it. But at the same time, we need to act as a whole board. And so for us to reach out to a contractor and ask for something specific, that has to be an action by the whole board, not by an individual. Also, what's happening in this meeting right now is a violation of protocol and it's being brought up. You do not address I do not address Mr. Markle, I address the chair. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's coming up right now that's, that's happening in how we do our meetings. It takes the personal tension out of it when we address the chair with a question rather than the individual that raised it. And so that's another of the two lessons we're learning from this about how we conduct meetings respectfully, but also how we work as a board making decisions, not as individuals. And it's a hard one to take because all of us want to take action and we got some hero sheets about people taking action, but we're one of seven. Each of us are one of seven. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Okay, Mr. Jones. Have we had, uh, excuse me, any other citizens that have asked SSG for uh, a plant tour? Yes, Mr. Marker did. Are we going to be charged for that? I'm assuming so, yes. Mr. Thompson? Thank you. Um, if, if we don't, do we have a policy on communication with our consultants? Um, it seems that everything should be filing, filling through the town administrator when we're talking to as as the project coordinator and, mm -hmm. and if we don't have a policy on how we communicate with our consultants perhaps we need to do that okay thank you yeah but i assume that once we have our election over we'll have the new board members and they will be given some you know uh we had service to come out and we had different you know how to be a trustee but before that could we have since we're not really a Having we know who the people are going to be, couldn't we have something with them and the public a meet and greet so that the public has a chance to say these are going to be your new trustees and ask them questions and the back and forth with the public and the new trustees, so that you know, just like we would uh, any new, new new people, you didn't get a chance to talk to the public when you were filling up vacancies. Mm -hmm. Comments from the public. Yes, Mr. Mark. Yeah. Okay. 
I apologize um, to the board and to Ms. Greer, uh, Ms. Greer and uh, Mr. Moore, I guess, um, if an apology is necessary. Um, I'm happy to um, make whatever amends are appropriate. However, um, I do want to make sure that you are all aware that um, I did go to the water plant of my own accord on, uh, I believe it was Thursday, uh, it was the, the Thursday following our, our last meeting. Um, and I felt as though I had been encouraged to do this um, at the first, uh, the Zoom meeting where uh, Brianna Greer, uh, Ms. Greer, um, gave a, a very candid and informative uh, breakdown of the current state of our plan. Um, and I don't have a, a video, so this is a, a transcript that was based off of a, a volunteer citizen's uh, written transcript. Um, she said that I imagine you all might have a lot of questions. And one thing I would like to suggest is that the town or other concerned townspeople come and look at the plans and understand them. I think the best thing that can come out of all of this is an increased awareness of your water security and your obligations as a town and as a board member as, and as board members, as future board members, and as interested citizens. Now, having been invited to go to the water plant previously during the filming um, of, the, of the tour, um, I took the initiative and went up there and where I spent, I don't know how long, maybe, maybe an hour, um, talking to Mr. Moore, whom I found um, completely professional, very knowledgeable and helpful in every fashion. Um, I notified him that I was recording our interaction and he also recorded uh, audio of our time now, um, which I think would indicate to any reasonable person that all of my actions were completely above board, well intended, and um, there was no negative action. And I'd, I'd be happy to share this uh, video with any, anybody. Um, and I think it would be good for the board to ensure Ms. Greer, SSG, and Mr. Moore that they are facing no liability and uh, that they be absolved of any intimation of any wrongdoing on their part because they have done everything completely professionally and 100% um, above board. So um, if there's a change of policy that's necessary, by all means, I mean, that's kind of what we're deliberating here. Um, but it sounds to me like the tone of um, what we've been told changed in the past two weeks. And I suspect that there was some communication from town staff or Mr. Thompson that would uh, have caused a, a reason for this mental of the issue in the first place. So if you would like to have a good relationship with your contractors, make sure that they feel welcome and that they are not at risk. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we need to extend the meeting. I can make a motion to extend the meeting for 20 minutes. Do I have a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion passes. Ms. Gill. Uh, Mayor Walker, an invitation to the town is an invitation to the owners of the facility, not to every citizen. I have had reporters asking. Certainly we can agree that we weren't supposed to get reporters tours, but somehow we were supposed to get Mr. Marco a tour. Furthermore, all of these people contacted an employee of the people who hold the liability, not the people who hold the liability. This created an exceptionally untenable liability situation 
These individuals went into a building with standing pools of water, bare wires, tripping hazards, overhead hazards, with zero understanding and zero acknowledgement of who held the liability. This is akin to your neighbor's plumber letting you have a tour of your neighbor's house. I don't own these facilities. Josh does not own these facilities. I do not have authority from the town to provide tours to anyone, which is why there has to be better reporters in the plant. I have not given Josh authority to provide tours to anyone. This could quickly turn into, if there had been a catastrophic situation, even if Trustee Smith did not want to sue me, maybe her husband or children would, or maybe her insurance company yeah, would. Insurance. Uh, maybe her insurance company would sue me because you don't get to choose who your insurance company sues, right? They, maybe they would sue the town. Maybe they would sue Josh because he wasn't authorized by anyone to give a tour to anyone. Right? And so in this liability situation and in choosing to take matters in, into their own hands and contact someone whose phone number I never found out, I don't know how you guys got the phone number. Uh, that, like the liability situation, no consultant, no contractor wants to be in this situation ever. When you all made that choice, I am a single shingle. My house is on the line if you are injured. My livelihood is on the line if you are injured. If people touring this plan are injured on, on your tour that my employee authorized without permission, his house is potentially on the line. And this is my major objection. Not only was it a waste of time, it totally circumvented any reasonable process where the owner of the buildings it's brought into discussion of whether there should be a tour or not. I asked Mr. I asked Mayor Blackburn, were you aware that there was going to be a tour? No, I wasn't. Was the town administrator aware there was going to be a tour? No, she was not. Were the and perhaps the mayor can address this question to legal counsel. Who's liable when citizens tour a plant without permission? Can I just add, we are employees of the town of Franklin as I would like that clarified legally, okay. please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Conklin, who is liable when citizens take a tour of a, an authorized tour of the town? Could uh, you town display? You say trustees. Well, no, we are citizens. I mean, we are employees of the town. Wait, mm -hmm. let Mr. Conklin speak. We're not just citizens. I guess, Madam Mayor, I guess I would probably want to review that legal question in a bit more detail, but as a general matter, the Colorado Governmental Immunity Act would apply to property owner liability with the town as a property owner of the water plant. Now, there are exemptions to that, to the immunity granted by the CGIA for certain instances, um, including if there's a dangerous condition that's present on a facility that's maintained. Um, so I, I would probably want to just follow up with you in more detail as to a specific answer to, to, to that question. But the, uh, the, the, if, it's, if, the, can, if the harm was a cause as a result of the a dangerous condition of a facility, uh, the town as landowner would probably be the primary party with uh, with with liability issues and when generally when you're having contractors that do perform work for the town they're liable as a result of acts of their own negligence and and it, it's unclear what if that's that issue here or not so sorry I can't be more specific but broad answer thank you mayor Brockett, if I may continue these liability situations have to be clarified before you put your contractor's house on the line. It's absolutely unacceptable. I'm sure you learned a lot. I cannot address by fact to anything you heard, nor can anyone else in this room. Certainly, an upcoming committee member is not an employee of the town. And yet, this person chose for themselves. I invited the town to organize towards the plant. 
you all have access to my contract. And nowhere in there does it say, call up Josh and get it to work. It does not say that. I request that the town, that the mayor request a motion for indemnification of the town, myself and Mr. Moore, SSG and Mr. Moore in this matter, retroactively. Given the exposure to black mold, potential for litigation still exists. Yeah. Um, so I just, because they get this question was brought up, I just wanted to address a, a couple of things. First, I do want to state that in, in, at no time had um, Ms. Greer and I had any conversations about access to the plants prior to her coming in stating that she had a letter she wanted to supply to the board because of access, I was not aware. So this is no change in direction or um, a feeling from the contractor uh, as far as uh, from the previous Zoom meeting and this meeting. What I would say that, and, and also knowing um, very well, I know that there was no ill intent meant from the, I would revert to, of course, to the attorney. And I, I really appreciate um, Paige, what, Trustee Smith Page, um, what you presented with your with your motions because I think that that exactly addresses it. The conversations I've had since where the where the water gets muddy is that um, are you acting if, when an individual trustee or two trustees do something or schedule something or do something outside of direction by the board or conversation at the board level and the board saying yes let's schedule tours in groups. Your, whether or not you're operating as the trustee under that, or if you're operating as that individual citizen because you don't lose that. So um, that was a quite, that was one part that was put uh, brought to my attention as well as um, uh, whether or not, while the town's insurance may be the primary insurance, could the town in turn litigate and say, we did not authorize a contractor outside of the scope of their agreement to allow access. So that wasn't something that the town had allowed. And I don't think any of these things would have, anyone would have thought of these things if it hadn't have happened. And again, I know that there was no ill will or having been in the plants myself many times, um, I know how incredibly useful it is to see them firsthand and walk through. Um, and so I just, I did want to state that. Yeah, I just want to acknowledge it's very different when an employee of the town gives a tour of the plant versus a contractor. It's a very different liability situation. Um, and I am very upset to have been put in that liability situation without anyone even telling me. We all went to search my employee. It's not appropriate. And as you work towards this scope that's going to give you unfettered access to buildings and have ORCs having to let you in anytime you want. Um, I, I caution the board on where the liability is at that. And if you're going to put it with the ORC, and it will be with the ORC, it will be with the contractor, or what, no matter what contract says, they're going to feel that liability and they're going to charge you for it. Mr. Johnson? <clears throat> yeah. Um, Actually, I want to thank you, Trustee Smith, for acknowledging that you should have contacted Ms. Greer before going on your outing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering why you didn't consider asking the town administrator first. Um, this should have been your first point of contact. Uh, all this lack of transparency would have been avoided. Okay. And maybe Mr. Johnson, you should be talking to him. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I think uh, Ms. Kerr states very clearly in her letter when she says there is no transparent reason for trustees to contact contractor employees and request out of scope private citizen tours. I agree with Trustee Smith that she needs to reimburse the town $180. Everyone asks for transparency from others but very few want to provide it themselves. Thank you. Thank you and I would say, Ms. Greer, that I, I agree that this process was handled the wrong way. It should have gone through the proper authorities. 
and that was beginning with uh, the town administrator, who would then contact you, who would then contact the employees. And that would have solved this issue and it would not have become what it was. And we do have, you know, as trustees, you know, we have a code of ethics we have to follow. And part of that code of ethics says that we operate as a board. We don't operate as individuals outside of that board. And that, you know, just like becoming involved in personnel issues beyond the scope of what we are supposed to do, we are not supposed to be acting on our own. So yes, I, I apologize on behalf of the town for some inappropriate actions. And I hope we will set a policy that will prevent such issues happening again in the future. Yes. I would like to again request that there be a motion for a waiver for the town, for myself, for Mr. Moore, that is signed by the three individuals who avail themselves to this time without authority. Uh, I would ask Mr. Conklin, would that be appropriate? I, I'm not sure I followed that, if you could repeat it. <laughs> I would like to have a waiver signed retroactively by the citizens who chose to avail themselves to a plant tour. I'd like it created by the town to indemnify the town, SSG, and Mr. Moore. So the, the trustees would waive any liability related to the 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 visit that, that related to the water plant tour. And Mr. Merkel. Three, um, three individuals toured the site. I can certainly prepare if the board directs me to a liability waiver for them to sign in their individual capacities, uh, if that is what, it, and, and they can choose to do so or not. The, the board can't compel those individuals to sign or to not sign that, but I can prepare that form for them to uh, to execute if they desire to. My, my preference is that rather than me paying for a lawyer for someone else's intrusion into my liability and risk, that the state go ahead and ask you to prepare it for the board ask the attorney to prepare that waiver. If they choose to sign or not, it is up to them, I agree. It will also affect whether I am willing to sign the next contract. All right. Yes, Ms. It is clear I am a liability to this board. I hereby resign. I will sign your waiver. I wish you all the best. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. 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 Quiet. We will have order even when we have issues in this room. This is ridiculous. Please be quiet. Don't no. 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 Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. You gotta be joking. Is you know what you have to do? This is Ms. Hunt Patterson. You are out of that administrator. Have not been recognized by the chair. To trustee to the public for years on this issue. Postponing, delaying, not listening, you as well, Mary. So put it into context why this happened and why the trustees took the initiative to go see it for themselves when we have been asking for months. She's aiming for a lawsuit against the town. If you don't see that, you fall in line. Because you're in on it. Jesus. Okay. All right. Would someone on the board like to make a motion for us, to, for our lawyer, to uh, draw up waivers of liability against and SHG and the contractor? You need a motion to that? I need a motion. To okay. That. I make a motion that we instruct our attorney to create an indemnity uh, indemnification. Yeah, I guess it's that the right word? Right word. A, a waiver of liability related to the waiver of liability for the three individuals. Okay. Sign. Can I get a I don't second? I think that's quite a motion. I don't think that quite gets it. 
Yeah, I got uh, it. The, the attorney to draw the waiver of liability to, oh, God, I lost it. See? We still have a motion. A motion to ask the attorney to. Uh, a waiver of liability for the three individuals who took for the three individuals that toured the plant. I'm not sure that gets to it though. Is that sufficient? I think I I I think that gives me sufficient direction to prepare the, the form for people to consider to execute. So yes. Is that sufficient? Uh, I would ask that the waiver include the town for the town's city. Okay, the town, uh, SSG and Josh. SSG, and as an individual, Josh Moore, since SSG had not authorized Josh Moore to provide any tour. Okay. Yeah, and then the I mean, waiving liability for the tour. Right? Yeah. Waiving liability. Okay. Yeah. A waiver of liability. So that's understood the tour was at their own risk. To protect SSG Josh Moore in the town of Shamia. Yeah. Is that ask the attorney to draw up a waiver of liability uh, to be signed by the three that toured the plan to protect SSG Josh Moore in the town of Shamia? Okay. Okay. We have a second. Yes, I have a second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Yeah. You know, we are at 946. We have four minutes left. Four minutes left in the meeting before we either adjourn or we move All right, so somebody make a motion to move this forward. I'd like to move that we uh, continue the meeting until 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> All right, we have a second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Mr. Martin. Um, if signing this waiver indicates that I will owe money to the town, I will not sign it. I didn't hear that. No, if, if there this is waiver no money indicates involved. that I will, in, I will owe money to the town, I will not sign it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ms. Ms. Watson, I believe you had your hand up. Yes. So um, I just, I'm wondering, is there going to be an opportunity to speak after this vote on the same topic? No. Okay. So I want to say, um, Mr. Markle is not just a citizen. He's a board member. He is a water, a water advisory board member. And they are authorized by ordinance to make findings and investigate. And maybe you needed to make that a little bit more clear what the process um, and the way investigation should happen because it sounds a little ambiguous to me. There's nothing that says they have to ask permission from the town administrator. It's a board that's been set up by the town board to report to the town board. So I think there's some real gray area there. Um, I'm wondering if we need to get a hazmat team in on the water treatment plant if it's truly that dangerous. And I'm really uncomfortable with how aggressive hostile and litigious this woman that you hired is and I have I'm very uncomfortable with you um, <laughs> continuing any sort of professional relationship with her I've never seen anything like this before you guys are volunteers I'm sorry you are a little bit enthusiastic but to be raked over the coals for this is so wrong I don't think you should be agreeing with her, Mary. I don't think so. You can apologize respectfully and say this wasn't happening, but I think this has been handled like a circus. And I'm really wondering about the drama that that the whole state of the plant has presented with it. It's been extremely titillating and dramatic. And I'm wondering about this contractor. I just wonder what hormone she's on. Oh, that, that is a personal attack, Miss Watson, and that is out of no, order. That's, that's, no, that is a personal attack. Mr. Bruner, 
I did not apologize for the mistake. Um, I think what you're looking at here is a inexperienced contractor oh. with an inexperienced, an inexperienced administrator and an inexperienced board. I think what you've received from the contract is a uh, uncalled for vicious personal attack on the integrity of board members on this board, one of whom has walked out because of that attack. And while talking about proper procedures and the code of conduct, the mayor has violated that code of conduct by making a grovelling abject apology to this person in violation of that very code that requires no board member shall make any representation for the board on any member on any matter the board has not voted on, which you have just done. And it's just cost you one of the best trustees you've got, one of the only trustees that is not a mushroom. You know about mushrooms, you keep them in the dark and you feed them manure, okay? Her letter is food for mushrooms, that's my opinion. She is carrying on having a tantrum over things that are not in the contract. If she had the experience and the administrator had the experience and the board had the experience, contract would cover these things. There's a reason people don't like government contracts. They're, they're big contracts. They cover a lot of detail. To say that none of this, nobody would have ever thought of any of this if it hadn't happened, I'm sorry. This is boilerplate stuff. This is boilerplate. This is arguments over things that should not have ever happened. If this board maintained competent legal health and used it to investigate or sign off on these contracts before they're left, I know when this would have happened. If we had an administrator that, that had any experience with writing and, and entering contacts, contracts, this wouldn't have happened. There's a letter here that was on the table uh, that I picked up as I walked in from uh, an anonymous uh, thing from somebody that gives their email address that uh, questions this, the uh, credentials of SSG, points out that they're not on an approved list of recognized uh, operators from the Department of Health. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what this says. And, uh, 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 you know, I mean, she told us First, she invited everybody to come up there and look at it. She told us the place was a mess. Now she's backpedaling at high speed. Um, she told us that she's charging this town a ransom. And now to come up and want to pivot over an hour here and there and talk about overtime, there's no overtime mentioned in the contract, is beyond the pale as far as I'm concerned. Okay, Mr. Bernard, thank you. I think we've had. I'm not sure I have done it. Um, You've already as said. I said, that letter was filled with, with uncalled for personal attacks with assumptions of bad faith and accusations of ulterior motives. And you're apologizing and your board member just walked out. Well, I think that's very wrong. Thank you, Mr. Burke. All right. We'll be on the extension. No, 10 o'clock. Yeah, we, we said it was 10 o'clock. 20 minutes. It was 10 o'clock. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, we did say it was 10 o'clock. Yes. Are you have not been recognized yet, Miss? Raise your hand um, and be recognized. I guess based on yeah, that uh, February 3rd video, I would have assumed that, yes, it was. Um, Brianna said, come. And if anything changes from this, the positive would be that everyone comes up sees what's going on, the public, the trustees, then Trustee Knudsen's uh, mea culpa of saying that, uh, yes, we're all um, involved in this. We didn't do our due diligence. We did not observe the plants. We didn't go up there. And so I guess that's where we were at. I, I think in a way, why I don't know it's gotten so dramatic I would have thought Brianna would have just, if she had, I guess they misunderstood what was said in that video. And then I would have thought that Brianna would have just told Josh, like, oh, I heard you had people up to the plant. And that was just sort of between her and Josh. 
that was between an employee and an employer. And she would have just said, Josh, that's not the way I want to do that. They should go through the manager. Please do, you know, dissuade anybody else from here on. And that would have been done. I am not sure how we've gotten to this point. Um, other than the fact that the person that was really involved in the mess up of these plants is Travis Loberg. <laughs> and we've forgotten all that. Why is the state of the plants the way they are? Because of Travis Loberg not doing his due diligence in his job. That's why. Why was Travis, who, who was responsible for Travis Loper? Corinne, who is responsible for Corinne? You all, who is responsible for you all? The public, and that's how it goes. Who owns the water plants? The public, the citizens. So therein it lies. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Greer. And we're going to take comment from Ms. Greer, comment from Mr. Markle, and then we're going to vote on the motion. I, I just wanted to point out to the mayor and to the board that the letter named no one. These people chose to name themselves. And in that way, no personal attack was made. And that was very deliberate on my part. I did not wish to publicly embarrass anyone. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Markle. Hey, no comments. I wanted to uh, speak to some, sorry, uh, uh, Administrator Ferguson wasn't here when I began to speak before, um, before I asked what I'm here now. Um, I wanted to speak to the uh, previous mention of uh, possibility of either action um, or, or ill intention. Um, and it was um, Ms. Um, Patterson who uh, reminded me that um, if, say, someone did show up to the plant with ill intent or to cause negative action, the damage that they could cause would be nothing compared to the state of the plant when these guys walked into it. The damage that was caused by poor management of that facility far outstrips anything that anyone might have done by accessing it for a tour, okay? Consider that liability of the damage that we have to repair now, right? And the coverage that does not exist for it. You are our coverage for that liability, right? You're here to protect us from that, which will be hundreds of thousands of dollars, possibly, in malfeasance, mismanagement, right? So I think you might be focusing a lot of your attention on uh, a non-issue, while well, the real issue is still very apparent. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second. No, I said I'm cutting off public comment. We have a motion and a second. Ask about the last thing on their contract. The board we have a motion and a second on the board. We need to deal with our motion in a second. Are we ready to vote? I'm all right now. We have a motion to have the attorney draw up a waiver of liability to be signed by the three individuals and to protect SSG, John Moore, and the town of Payne. Josh, Josh Moore. Josh Moore, sorry. Josh Moore and the town of Payne. All in favor? Uh, five. Five. Opposed? All right, that motion passes. We have already dealt with the contract extension. If you have issues, please take them to the town administrator. I just want to make a comment. That's all I want to say. Is all right, please come up to the podium to do that, Ms. Kendall. We need to extend the meeting again. Madam Mayor, I'd like to extend the meeting for 10 minutes. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion passes. Chris Kendall, Minnesota Creek Road. At the bottom of SSG's contract, it says task 50, Board of Trustee Interaction. 
SSG will make themselves available for up to four hours of board of trustee meetings per month. Trustee interaction regarding water system operations is limited to the discussion with the our board of the trustees. Okay. So we're paying for them to talk to, to the entire board. Yeah. To the board. Yeah, I was going to. Two comments, please. One is that this is an update to the existing. Right, this is an update. Is this is an update the original. Wasn't on the original. No. Okay. The other just comment that I'd like to make is it's my understanding that the water system is enterprise company. Well, it's an enterprise fund. Okay, so it's not a, a self-standing company. It's no, okay. no, it's part of the town, but it's Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Next. On our agenda is review and possible action regarding expenditure of funds for maintenance and repair by filter tap. Have in the packet the proposed repairs and what the costs are. Do you have anything to add to that, Ms. Ferguson? The information provided on the agenda summary would be all um, that I would have added to that if, for anyone that doesn't have the um packet in front of them uh what i noted on here was that a major component for redundancy of the water treatment plant is operating skids to treatment and disinfection of the water as well as running certain required maintenance and backwashing known as cycle in place of the system currently as been discussed the plant is operating with one um, integrity tested well-functioning skid but it is precarious um, to remain in such a situation where there's only one skid operating the plant because if that skid goes down, the plant would not be operational. Um, Filter Tech again is the company that engineered, designed and installed the plant and assists with some ongoing repairs and maintenance of the controls and provided to the board is the uh, cost to have that skid to repair um, and staff recommendation is that the board approve the attached estimate as presented so we can get that work underway. Okay, comments? Yes, I have two questions and the items not included in the quotation but not limited to. Uh, are they assuming that these, I'm assuming those parts are already in existence in the plant. So they're gonna use existing parts. And is there a contingency if they are found to have any of these are defective and need to be replaced during this reinstall? So I typically ask the board to um, not to approve it for the exact dollar amount and to include a contingency. Um, so I would um, suggest that the board do that. Um, this is, again, they're pretty, uh, they did inspect <laughs> everything and are pretty well um, skilled in knowing exactly what they're working with that's in there and they have been in and looked at it um but i would uh, i would recommend the board add a little bit maybe not to exceed nine thousand or ten thousand so that they can work within the just over eight uh, around eight thousand that they've got but have a little bit of contingency that doesn't require coming back to the board before they do the repair so, um would it be so right now we're at about no, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight over eight, close to nine. No, it's eight thousand three hundred eighty-three okay. twenty-three. So, should it be a percentage? It can be a per, not to exceed three. a percent or a dollar, either one. Yeah, it's that's a board of discretion. But if they do need to exceed, what does that mean? They come back for a. If it went over the percentage or dollar amount, I would have to bring it back to the board before it was approved. Okay. okay. All right. Would somebody like to make a motion? Sure, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, the proposal by Filter Tech uh, to uh, uh, for the expenditure of funds for maintenance maintenance repair of ongoing laser water treatment plant um, in the amount indicated on their proposal, not to exceed ten percent of what that proposal. Okay, you have a second. I'll second. Okay, further discussion from the board. Okay, from the public, yes, Ms. Spur. Madam Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would I have not read this scope of work, but I do want to encourage the town to consider that it's not just skip two that needs repair. There are additional pumps that need repair. The entire chemical backwash system is cracked and broken. 
and will be again without engineering considerations to secure the tanks for the next time the plant floods as they do from time to time. Uh, I, did, I just want to make sure that those are in there, and then if they're not, you consider additional budget for filter check for those numbers. Yeah. Yes. They are not included in this. This is specific just for the, the skid, but uh, filter tech is in the process of providing a complete task list overview of all the items in there that need that they could do the repair that are part of the system that they design, um, as well as the cost estimate for that. So I do anticipate to have that to bring to the board um, in very near future. Thank you. All right. Anything else from the public? Yes, Mr. Berger. I think there should be a statement from the board that as these repairs and investigations progress, that the people making them should be aware that there could be uh, an investigation. There could be, a, a, I think you have to ask the question, has there been neglect that goes beyond simple negligence? There, has there been criminal neglect? Has there been a failure to provide a required function by someone in a position of responsibility for this resource, these resources. And I hope that such an investigation takes place. And I think that everybody should be aware that the destruction of evidence is against the law. And that as these things proceed, uh, evidence of extreme neglect, something beyond normal wear and tear, should be preserved and reported. Um, there's also, uh, I think, I have to ask your attorney, but I think there's laws against overlooking things that are covered by law and against the law. The failure to provide a required function of an officer or employee of the town. I'm not sure how far that goes, but I think you should be asking those questions. Thanks. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the expenditure. Oh, thank you. To approve to a motion to approve to expend funds not to exceed 10% over the amount in the filter check proposal dated 14th of February. Are you ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that motion passes. Okay, we've got four minutes. We have a review of a possible letter. Do we? All right, let me ask you, Ms. Uh, Ferguson, are our next two items date sensitive? Um, they are. Mm -hmm. date, the, the, the letter of intent is, uh, yes, they are. Um, to provide it quickly to the board, we participate with Delta County as a whole in the countywide um, uh, multi jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan. So, this is their emergency plan of something major was to happen. Um, we participate, they do this review and provide this every five years. Um, the one we have right now expires um, actually in 2023, I believe. Um, and uh, so what is in the packet, the next two agenda items, the first is a letter of our intent to participate again, um, and that we would continue to participate in that plan. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and give an overview of the second item, which is the um, a letter of support to Delta County supporting their grant to perform um, to do the required update. The in kind for the town is the participation. So that is our in kind of the hours that we attend. I attend already attend MAC meetings, which is the multi area jurisdictional meetings. Um, and so it's that participation in attending those meetings and then having, they come to the board and they present uh, the updates and the board accepts that um, upon uh, the completion of the draft. Okay, we have one and a half minutes before our <laughs> meeting expires again. Do we want to extend the meeting? Okay, you're full. Can somebody make a motion? Okay, 10, 15. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, 10, 10, 20. All right. We have a motion to extend the meeting 10, 20. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. That motion passes. All right. Can we get a motion to... Uh, I know that we... Uh, oh, thank you. Approve the, the, our participation with the county has met planning. 
you know, we could support their grants and we participate in as that program. So you want to make two motions or one motion? Well, can we do it with one? I can yeah. probably do it with one. Yeah. One. Okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> so my understanding of your motion is, is that you move that we um, agree to participate in the multi-jurisdictional penalty yes. mitigation plan update and uh, write a letter of support for the grant. All right, discussion from you. We need a second. Oh, yeah, we haven't had a second. Did somebody second that? Second. Okay, discussion from the board. All right, discussion. Well, just a real quick thing. Um, yeah. In the interest of time, it's really important that we are prepared for floods. It's really important that we are prepared for fires. It's really important that we're prepared for any kind of emergency that might happen, like we had the water emergency a couple of years ago. So I think this is a really uh, critical kind of thing that we do. It's looking out in the future of what might be happening. We had a serious fire that destroyed a bunch of homes in the, in the Boulder area uh, earlier this year. We're in the same kind of fire mitigation. Here is a really critical thing for us to be involved in. Okay. Anything else from the board? All right. Anything from the public? Yes, yeah, Ms. Bird. With respect to uh, emergency response planning, emergency response planning is a requirement of your water permits and is currently number two in terms of being at the plan tour. I found one draft copy from many years ago. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention with respect to design. Thank you. All right. Anything else? All right. We have a motion and a second to um, agree to a, participate in the multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan and to uh, sign a letter of support for the grant for that plan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion passed. Yes. yes. If I may, uh, the next item on the agenda was the, um, the audit of the, the um, sound system. What was included in the packet was a spreadsheet of um, going back to 2018 that includes more than just the sound system. And I would request if the board would permit that we table this to the next meeting. That also would give me an opportunity to put the um, verbiage that I was going to provide in the packet. Okay, can we get a motion to continue this to the next meeting? I move that we continue this item to the next meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? No. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion passes. All right, now we have two ad hoc committee reports. Our disbursements. Oh, we forgot. Yeah, we got to do disbursements. All right. Can we get a motion on disbursements? And Madam Mayor, I think that we approve payment of accounts payable in the amount of $61,656.77. Uh, a loan payment of $74,000. Um, transfer uh, a payroll account and a that payroll of $18,106.51 and payment of payroll taxes of $7,718.97. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Questions from the board? Yes. Sorry, let me get this page. Um, oh gosh. So I had a question on the, the payment, the loan payment. I was just curious why we are, I'm sorry, I can't get to it. Um, 66. Thank you. Um, why we're paying what looks like the full interest for the entire life of the loan and why we're doing that um, in this payment. I just don't understand. I have to look at the chart. So this is, uh, we paid, uh, this is the ANCO bond, which is uh, through the sewer. Uh, and this is, uh, there's two payments a year, and this is the first one. So it's what, it, what I was curious about, it looks like they're paying this maturity dates. So is there, it, does each bond have its own maturity date? So each one of these is different. We're looking at 50,000. So then why is it 50,000 plus 24,000 and not 750? Maybe that should be my better question. 
principal plus the interest for that for one 2022 payment as opposed to $24,000 in interest. That's all I'm just reading. Because that bond, that bond matures at, uh, in March. Right, but then the so one they, next to it matures roll off in 2023. Over the life of the bond. Yes, yeah, so they're paying fifty thousand in principal and twenty four thousand in interest to get to seventy four thousand. Did you hear that? I did hear it. So, so regardless of the if this individual interest amounts associated with each with each year, you have to you're going to be paying twenty four thousand dollars of interest mm -hmm. for every of every one of these loans that are listed here. Okay, well, thank you. Um, and then I had a question on disbursements. Um, <coughs> I would like to, I would like to know um, on the roof, the three water leak. Can you tell me which ones were the, um, which one was the fixing of the leak at the corner of Delta and Second? I'm assuming it's the five thousand twenty-eight, and then what the other two are for. The reason I'm asking is because we have so many leaks, and I just want to know where they are. Or, or are these, is this a leak in the plant? You know, this could have been a leak in the 1 million and the 2 million as opposed to a leak in the street. And I think we need to be tracking where we're spending our money in the system. Right, so the um, 57 is second in Delta. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's the attachment. I forgot because we have all these extra attachments now. Sorry. Um, Three thousand twelve fifty is the third in Rio Grande. Mm -hmm. And the other one is uh, for the one thousand one hundred ten was just below the two million gallon water tank. Thank you. And then after we, I'd like to make a motion after we finish this disbursements motion, but it has to do with disbursements. It, it actually, what I would like to do is that we start seeing the invoices from Mr. Conklin, not because I'm checking on you, Jeff, but I think it's important now that we're doing an hourly rate that we should see exactly what work Mr. Thompson's working on. As the board, we are, he works at our pleasure and I would like to know See the invoices for what work, what the, what the topic is he's been spending time on. So we know what's been needing lawyer help and things like that. We see those invoices even before the meeting starts. We just so you're reviewed his invoice. Yeah. Just not even at six o'clock tonight. We reviewed that invoice. Right. But so, I'm thinking the public should see them too. Well, they're public well, I, I'm thinking when we pay it, it would be really nice to have the invoice in front of us and not me have to go look at it. Yeah. Uh, How many are there? Well, there's two payments. That's why I'm asking. There's two separate payments for Mr. Thompson's time. So I'm assuming two invoices. Is that not so? Yeah. I just thought. Yeah, I'll just. They're, two, they're in two invoices because I create individual matters. So. There, I build some time related to the um, one of the litigation matters. So there's a separate litigation account with respect to that matter, and then a general account for which there was some time that was at the uh, at the end of January. Um, you know, it's, those are documents that the trustees are are perfectly um, you know av available to them. I will say that often, sometimes, and I've uh, other attorneys will take the position. That the individual time or the the descriptions of the work completed may constitute attorney client privileged communications so um, in some instances so i would just caution uh, a, a complete open approach to that but certainly all of the trustees have can you know those could be made available to them and I typically have pretty detailed time entries with uh, each matter that, I've, that I'm working on. Okay, I appreciate that because at 2.10 an hour, it's gonna start adding up and I'm just curious. So I will, I withdraw that. I appreciate the discussion and I will just come in and take a look at those invoices um, so I can just get a handle on that. All right, Thank you. you've got 45 seconds. <laughs> 
He made the motion. Uh, he did. Okay. Yes, we have, 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 have a motion to accept disbursements. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion carries. We have 31 seconds. <laughs> oh, God. And then the meeting is either over or. I have some questions on the group invoices. You guys just. Okay, I do it. Uh, Ms. Uh, Kendall, would you please take this up with the county administrator? But this is your job. But we are, we have nine seconds left. Well, you guys need to be reading your invoices more carefully because group charged you 10 hours trucking and 27 hours labor. Okay, it, it is 20 had 10, three 20, and the meeting is either extended or is not I do not hear. Oh, I'm sorry. What was it? No, we are out of time. Either we extend the meeting or the meeting is over. I'd like to extend it five minutes. Okay. And the only reason is because we're the AWC was going to be at the end of this. And I would like to make a motion that we, the next agenda, that the AWC gets its own slot in the beginning so we can talk about those recommendations. All right, then let's go but, ahead. If I, if I may, can yeah. we just add that as an end item? Because the reason yeah. that it's not on there is because following multiple conversations about the resolution language, I followed the resolution titles for the for the meeting exactly the way it's on that resolution. But we can add it as an agenda item under unfinished business. Yeah, just for this next one so we can talk about it more and, and get a better handle on it. Okay, thank you. All right, we are, since we still have agenda items, but we're done. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, we are adjourned.